We are live. Did you guys get snow? No, we did not, but I saw Green Bay got snow. And welcome, everybody, to another awesome episode of the Four Guys Roundtable Show. Um, and you're probably saying, well, how the heck is it four guys considering there's only three people? Well, that's because our good colleague Joe is uh, just got drove home from uh, North from Pennsylvania to North Carolina, and he's tired, so he's taking a night off. So you got us three lovely gentlemen to entertain you for probably about next hour, hour and a half or so. And, uh, you know, with that, you know, we always got to play a little soundbite just to introduce us. So um, we'll do this one. Oh, hell no. Yes. Oh, hell no. You got us three. So. No, yeah, no, no, snow. no, we didn't get snow unless you're the person who waited on me in the Dunkin' Donuts drive through um, a week ago, Friday, I think it was, because it was uh, it was cold last week to the point where, like, you know, it frosted overnight, like two, three days in a row. So being that I don't park in a garage anymore, I had to scrape the car. So the remnants of the scrapings were like still on my windows and stuff. I get up to the window at the Dunkin Donuts. The woman sees like the remnants of the frost scrapings on the, the edges of the windows and shit. And she saw she seriously goes, you got snow on your car? It like, <laughs> I'm like going to drive away from it tomorrow. I'm driving down to get away from this fucking snow. Yeah, nice. I, I've always, I've always been of the opinion that um, snow has no business ever being seen in Pennsylvania um, before it's actually winter again. So, you know, meaning like before in Pennsylvania, second, wherever the, the solstice falls. And the you could mention this is kind of ironic. I think it's either, sorry, either like yesterday, today, or tomorrow is, I think it was three years ago that we had that really freak snowstorm that crippled like a lot of the eastern part of the country here the day that I was driving home from fucking New York City. And yes, I remember seven that. hours to get home. Uh, that was like right around like three years ago today, tomorrow, something around somewhere around there. So, uh, uh, yeah, I prefer not to see snow like that. I don't think we're getting snow like that. I think it's, you know, but still, there's a little bit of a dusting. But like when I, when I, when I, I went to, see, I went to see the Eternals today. And when I mm -hmm. went out, to go there, I'm like, shit. <laughs> like, I'm like, and I, when I go to the theater, it's not far from here. I, I wear sandals because so I, I take my sandals off when I get in one of those recliner chairs. So I'm like, shit, like it's fucking snowing. And oh, snowing. You're, one of, you're one of those people. Yes. It was snowing when I got out of the movie, too. That Did sucks. you see it, Pat? <laughs> Hell, funny you should ask. Oh, this is oh, this is the story you were telling about us, telling us about. Go ahead, tell us your awesome story. Evidently, it's about going to see the Eternals, or it, trying it, to. It, 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 yes. Um. So, uh, as I texted Jeremy and and AJ earlier today, and Joe, um, I had a bit of a fiasco ish kind of weekend. Now, just to, it, it really began last night. Just to kind of go through this very quickly. So I didn't. I, I needed to go to the mall yesterday, to Palmer Park Mall and that place um, is still open <laughs> <laughs> well that's kind of part of the story um <laughs> i i didn't really i was just kind of dawdling around yesterday morning and penn state was playing at noon so i was like you know what i'll go after the penn state game and then i also forgot i had a grocery order set for five o'clock that i had to go pick up so i'm like all right i'll go after i get my groceries so i didn't actually get to the mall then until a little close to why the recording stop um i have a different way i'm gonna get it oh okay i just i heard that so i'm just thinking that was yeah important. anyway um so i didn't get there until a little bit before seven o'clock now the posted mall hours are still on a saturday 10 to 9 at that mall which of course we have all worked at at some point in our lives uh so i get there and as i'm walking in there's this eerie emptiness to the place um the subway is closed i'm like that's it. Closed. Um, like the one jeweler place was closed. I glanced down the other end of the hall. The other jeweler that's like around like the one corner is closed. I'm like, 
And I had to go to the Hallmark store and there's the Hallmark store. It is closed. There's literally a woman locking up as I'm kind of like walking up and there's a sign posted outside that says, due to staff shortages, our current hours are Monday through Saturday, 10 to 6, Sunday, 11 to 5. Ooh. So like, oh, they're being impacted by this staff shortaging too, which <laughs> I, full disclosure, I don't know how much to believe this stuff, but that's another story. So anyway, then the other thing I had to do was like, I wanted to try to trade some stuff in at FYE. They refused to take my trade in saying it was too close to closing time. I'm like, I wanted to just say, well, what fucking time do you have to close? But considering I had to come back to go to the Hallmark store anyway, I'm like, oh, I'm not going to cause an argument. Let me just go and be on my way. I'm like, you know what? I'm in the mood for a McRib now, because as we all know, when the McRib is back, you must get the McRib. No, no, you don't have to get the McRib because that's probably yeah. the most disgusting sandwich ever. <laughs> no. McRib is right. I learned this many years ago. <laughs> you should find the family guy. You should find the fan you find the family guy clip when they like see that the McRib is back. <laughs> anyway, so I'm just driving down and like gonna stop at the McDonald's. It's on 25th Street. No, that place is closed because it's being renovated. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Uh, so, like, <laughs> no, that's fine. so I went to a different McDonald's. All right. So today, the issue here is that my dad moved, my parents moved. They moved mm -hmm. to a place in Jersey, which is about an hour and a half drive time from me, from, from my apartment to, to their new house. It takes me longer to drive to their house than it does to my younger sister's house, which I thought was okay. a pain in this drive. So he wants to see this movie and like I even like when I was over their house last week to watch the Giants because the Giants were on uh, CBS and I don't get I didn't get the CBS feed that they were televised on so if I wanted to see the Giants I literally had to go to their house to do it mm -hmm. that's what I did um, you know we were talking about which movies we he definitely like wants to see like you know Ghostbusters King's Man um, Spider-Man of course you know and mm -hmm. Eternal was on that too so the problem is trying to figure out where to go. There's not a lot of theaters that are AMC theaters, since I have their, their membership, that are like kind of like equidistant driving time for the two of us. Okay. Uh, and the other problem is they're having some issues with their car where their engine light keeps coming on. And no matter what they try to do so far, to get it looked at, it keeps coming on. And it's really at the point where they're probably going to just have to get a new car. But of course, they were moving houses, so they couldn't really go car shopping. So I don't want my dad driving any more than he has to in that car. So I said, all right, let's go to the one in it's considered in Princeton, which is closest for him. It's only about like it's supposed to be like a 20, 25 minute drive for him. For me, it's an hour and 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like I'm willing to do that, though, because we want to go see the movie. So we arranged to go see the movie at noon today based upon looking at like the seating charts for the other show times, uh, you know, also optimizing the movie's running time within how long it would take me to drive home mm -hmm. so, that, so that I wouldn't be out too late, you know, blah, blah, blah. What was that? It's like two and a half hours, the movie. Right, right, right. So we arranged to... Yeah, so like the ideal would have been to go see it at one o'clock, but like the seats where we would want to sit in the back row were taken. So we, that's why we decided to go with the noon show time. I said, you know, just make sure you get up and go and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, I wake up, I do what I have to do. I get there about 11 20, 11 30. I got there sooner than I thought I would. And I'm waiting for him to show up and he's not getting there and he's not getting there and he's not getting there. So finally, I call my mother and I go, he left, right? You know, like, like he, he, he's on his way, right? She goes, Pat, he left at about 11. And I'm like, he should have been here by now. <laughs> Jesus. Now, to this theater, especially if you haven't really done it before, it's not the absolute easiest. It's in Jersey. You basically have to get on route uh 295 we both had to do we had to get a route 295 um mm -hmm. south and then up to route one north route one in new jersey is a bitch uh especially in this particular area okay. um 
you know, it's like think MacArthur Road, but twice as big. You know, it's like it's like you know, it's much okay. busier and and everything and and stuff like that. So both sides of the road and everything. So you have to make like this exit onto this road called Meadow Road. Then you have to make a quick little like kind of like, and then like the mall where this theater is, because yes, this is a mall theater, is like right there on the right then kind of. So it's very awkward. Apparently he missed the exit for Meadow Road. He said he Uh didn't see, he said he didn't see the sign. He ended up so someplace so far up the road saying that he couldn't find a place to turn around that we missed the movie. Jesus. <laughs> because by the time by the, by the time he finally got to the mall, it was like 1230. And even with previews and everything, um pretty sure the movie had started by that point. Actually it was it was after 1230. So it was not fun. And the other problem was sorry to make this disgusting, but it was right as I was like waiting for him to like show up, like right as it was hitting noon and everything. My stomach decided it is time to empty the contents. <laughs> what you gonna do, brother? <laughs> exactly. Well, I did what I had to do, which was go, which was go, which was, which was, go find the mall bathroom before, as Jim Carrey playing Andy Kaufman as Tony Clifton, a man on the moon, said, "Before I shit my pants." <laughs> so you had to blow up the mall bathroom, Pat. Uh, more or less. Yeah. Nice. At least there were multiple stalls, so you know. <laughs> but yeah, so he he finally he, he finally got there just 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 too late, and also too late for me to get a refund on my on the ticket. Um, you know, it was just because we split between who pays for the ticket, and I say ticket because again, I have the membership, so right. you know, I don't pay for each individual movie. You know, it's just his ticket. So this week it was my turn for ticket, his turn for snacks. So because I was still holding out hope that he was going to get there, you know, you can only request a refund before the posted show time. So I couldn't get a refund. So, you know, at the end of the day, though, I was like, all right, I'm not going to get angry with him. I was more concerned to get more concerned than anything, because, again, it's like my dad is 72 years old now. There's little things here and there where it's like you want to go are you right you know just the unfortunate effects of aging i guess and there is history of like alzheimer's in the family and shit like that like my grandmother had when she was dying of cancer apparently also had alzheimer's on top of it but Mm, geez yeah it was god she deteriorated so over like two years it was not fun watching because i love my grandmother so much it was she's the only grandmother i had my mother's mother died many years before i was born yay rangers won the shootout uh yeah so 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 it was just it was just a fucked up situation so my dad finally got there we talked about stuff for a few minutes and then you know just came home and then when i did all the stuff at the mall i had I was tending to do yesterday <laughs> the day before uh, yeah that you know, sounds because, pretty shitty yeah, yeah because now i had the time and everything so um and the other problem is my dad, uh, I don't want to say he's technology resistant because he's not technology resistant, but he's been cell phone resistant. Oh, he's he still, sounds like my uncle. He, 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 get a still, cell phone. he is still using a, a flip phone. <laughs> he, re- he, he refuses to text. <laughs> Jesus. Almost um, not, not quite as bad as AJ. You're not quite map? that bad. Does he follow the maps at least on the phone or? No, he has no apps okay. on the phone. So, and, and I was also talking with my younger sister while this was going on because I was like, I don't, he doesn't, I don't think his phone even has Bluetooth, but, it, it, but if it does, it's not connected to my parents' car because my mother's phone is, and I'm not sure their phone's connected via the Bluetooth in it. But anyway, so I'm like, I don't want to call him for fear that he'll like miss the exit or this or that or whatever again. Um, and so I'm like texting both my mother and my sister saying, if you want to text him and, and try to figure this out and everything, you know, go, go right ahead and blah, blah, blah. And I was at the end of the day, when, when he's still not showing up, I was basically begging my sister. I'm like, Meg, you know, the area, you know, the road a little bit. I don't, you know, so, you know, yeah, I understand you're out with friends right now. Uh, 
but she, yeah, she got to meet Carrie Elwes last night, by the way. Um, she, I was like, you know, please, like, you know, text, pe- text him or whatever. And so at the end of it, then I'm texting my, both my sisters and my mother. And I said, guess what we're getting dad for Christmas, guys. We are getting him a relatively inexpensive, easy to use smartphone. And we're going to make him learn how to use the fucking thing, especially the goddamn Maps app. Well, good luck with that. (laughs) I know it's going to be an adventure, but it's like, you know what? It's now a necessity. I think we were told that his phone wouldn't work that much longer on the network anyway. So that's how long he's had it. So, yeah, it was uh, an interesting day. It was? Yes. Wasted a quarter tank of gas. It was a uh, it was a pretty good oh. movie, Pat. The 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 extra scenes are the biggest deal. Was, was the most important part of the movie. The two post credit scenes. Oh, nice. Yeah, I kind of figured they would be with this movie, being that it's like you know a brand new cast of characters and and you know situation. And you know, once again, I think I said the same thing about Shang Chi. Uh, in that it's advancing the story of the MCU, you know, forward. Um, kind of speaking of the MCU real quick, I saw an article today. Now I don't remember where what site it was on. Is that something about, and maybe this has to do with the fact that they pushed it back because um, they, they kind of pushed everything starting next year back a couple months. Mm-hmm. Um, it says something about the Doctor Strange sequels undergoing major reshoots. Yes, I saw that yesterday. Mm-hmm. Interesting. That's not good. Yeah. So, because obviously the the first thing then is, of course, why? You know, and it's like, you know, sometimes when they've reshot movies, it's been for the better. Like, you want to, like, I think the biggest controversy, I guess you could say, about like a movie undergoing reshoots was was Solo, uh, Mm -hmm. where they they supposedly reshot more than half the movie and everything. And while Solo still, wasn't greatly received from everything that I read and heard about it. It sounded like the reshoots definitely made a much positive difference because it sounded like the direction they were going with it uh, before the reshoots was going to make it into some kind of like a fucking laughing stock. So Marvel gave us a bunch of tidbits too. So they gave us Moon Knight and She Hulk, and they gave us a bunch of tidbits. Yeah, the all the all the Disney Plus stuff. The, the the Disney Plus Day that was this past week, which I don't know, seemed to me like it was more hot air than anything else. It was like they didn't really see. So, yeah, they, they, they talked about stuff, but it also seems like there wasn't it wasn't quite as um, impactful, I guess you could say, as like, say, like the D.C. thing from a few well, weeks it, ago. Well, here's the here's what they did that like there were certain movies that they released like. uh was it was the Shang? Um, why can't I right. think of the name? Shang Chi. Shang Chi. They put were... that on Disney Plus without any like um, time yeah, frame yeah. before it became available to the normal subscriber. Um, there was a right. couple you other things too. That was yeah, the big it's, thing. It's available. It's available. I think now on Disney Plus for all subscribers, where you don't have to pay like the, right. the premium. Which I haven't, um, I haven't. I haven't seen it yet. So I told Nicole after I come back from my trip we're gonna watch that one yeah and like i, I got to watch jungle I cruise this, finally jungle I, cruise. Say, I, I, I think they did the same with jungle cruise too yeah they Nicole released it a couple days early. early he's like can we watch it again i'm like i don't know maybe i'm like i i liked it but i don't know if i want to watch it again i was actually very surprised by that to find out uh and spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't seen it yet well we've all three the, seen it. The, well i was thinking more of our okay. audience <laughs> um, um I was interested. I was interesting to find out that Rock's character, uh, Frank, who ends up being Francisco, was actually four hundred, almost four hundred years old because of you know he was part of that group, um, and because he's in makeup when he's the conquistador, you know it's re- unless you're really really paying attention in the beginning scenes, you're not going to notice that he's part of that group. Like you really have to. You probably have to watch it in slow mo. Like some of those weirdos do, they're like they go back and watch it the second time, like super slow mo through every scene. Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> it's, it's one of those things that when yeah you go back on subsequent viewings, you're looking for them because you didn't catch it the first time. Yeah, the best movies are like that though. Um, you know, I, I I remember when I went and saw them in the theaters. I I think I started to 
those off around the reveal of all that mm -hmm. uh it was, it was getting a little you know like it like it felt a little long that was one of the things that i thought was a little bit weaker about that movie i'm like now we're getting a little too into like pirates of the caribbean territory yeah it took it took a long time to get to i wasn't the point. thrilled when they revealed that that what jeremy just said i wasn't necessarily thrilled about that <laughs> My, I, I will say, my, and I just brought up the quotes so I could look them up again here because I was watching. I was actually watching the clip on YouTube last night. My absolute favorite part of Jungle Cruise was mm -hmm. part of the movie where they made it like the Jungle Cruise attraction at, at Disney World, which is mm -hmm. if you've ever been on Jungle Cruise at Disney World, you know that the big thing is, you know, the, the ride really gets improved by the quality of your skipper. Mm -hmm. in the terms of the very obviously horrible puns that they make <laughs> those were the best part of that movie were all the wonderful puns <laughs> if you look to the left of the boat you'll see some very playful toucans they're playing their favorite game of beak wrestling the only drawback is only two can play <laughs> <laughs> it was great i was dying and it's the great how they have the actors just be like really that's the joke. <laughs> the rocks you see here in the river are sandstone, but some people. It's one of my boulder attractions. <laughs> they were great. I love them. They were like dad jokes. I was dying. You know, before this, I used to work in an orange juice factory, but I got canned. I couldn't concentrate. <laughs> you know, they say the boa constrictor right there is capable of eating up to 500 pounds per sitting. Personally, I find that very hard to swallow. Morning. Are you gonna con are you gonna continue to quote these? <laughs> yeah, I was doing the whole thing. It was just, oh. <laughs> that was the last one. Make it stop, mommy. No one can make me stop. Close your mouth, and I'll feed you to the boa. <laughs> the little girl was like objecting to it. So because again, that's very much like the jungle cruise ride. So I love that they that they put that touch in there and the way the rock said those lines <laughs> was pretty hysterical too. So yeah, he had good delivery on those. Yeah, he was good. I mean, the banter was good between him and the female lady, and even the the, the Emily Blunt. Yeah, I, they they had they had very good chemistry with each other. The other guy was even good too. The the, the guy the, the the rich guy, he was. Yeah, terrible. her brother. Yeah, he was kind of. He grew on me. Yeah, yeah. So, but before we continue, I do want to make an announcement to everybody that's watching, or whenever you're listening to this. Um, I don't know when Jeremy next, makes announcements, it's never anything good. No, it is good. This is the good oh. one because oh. next Sunday we will be live with our watch party for Survivor Series and we will be giving away two t shirts, two four guys roundtable shows t shirts to two winners. You can only win once per question. So there's going to be two questions that Darth Pat has come up with. If you answer the question correctly and you're the first to answer it correctly, you win a shirt. Once you win a shirt, you can't answer the next question and get the sh the second shirt. So you can only win one shirt. We're giving away two. So you must tune in and watch our watch party with us, interact with us, have fun with us, answer the question right, and you win a free t-shirt. What the heck? Can't get better than that. And we're still waiting, but we might have a guest. I'm pretty uh, sure host. I think we're pretty sure we're going to have a guest on for some of it. Maybe not the whole thing, but so uh, his name is Sean Sakamoto. Um, so we hope to have him, if he's not here for the whole thing, at least for part of it, because he will just add another element to the whole craziness that is a watch party for us. And probably we're just going to probably make fun of the whole entire show because it's probably going to be pretty bad, as most Survivor Series has been. So let's move on yeah, to they, some... They, 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 they don't need to be, but they have been, yeah. Yes, they don't need to I be, watch... but they have been. <laughs> Real quick, I Pat, I, don't, I watched Red Notice, and I thought that was pretty entertaining. Oh, I do I'll want to watch that. I saw that. I'll have to get around to that at some point. The good news about that is um, being a Netflix movie, I know it'll always be there. <laughs> it, yeah, it's, it's like, not going anywhere. Well, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm so behind on other movies. So Wayne, yeah. Wayne pretty much has chemistry with everybody, but I'll take him and Ryan Reynolds over even him and Kevin Hart because Reynolds is the king of snark. He's the best snarky person I've ever seen, and he's snarky. As snarky as they'll let him be in this movie, and the charisma and the on screen, like just between Ryan Reynolds and him and Gal Gadot, is really they have they have all kinds of on screen chemistry, all three of them. I'm mm -hmm. not trying to spoil anything, but I would be perfectly okay 
if they did another one. So yeah. Well, you know, I, I can I can certainly understand um Reynolds going like full snark in this because he really had to cut back on the snark and free guy, even though that was filmed a while ago since it was originally supposed to come out last year. So, you know, he was, you know, obviously making up for lost snark. I mean, he did it as much as they would let him. I mean, it's it's not a dirty movie. So mm-hmm. it was more of a, you know, PG com like snark, but he was still snarky. And I just, and if, because you, because you, Pat, and and I, Jeremy may may or, because you've never you don't really care about the fact if Hobbs and Shaw Ryan Reynolds has a cameo in that and his banter with Dwayne is really good in that too. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping that they're just gonna get everybody they can and put them all in the the last two Fast and Furious movies. So maybe they'll let Ryan Reynolds have a cameo <laughs> in the Fast yeah. and Furious movie. So I just I just wanted we watched Red Notice and it was it was pretty funny. So, yeah, that's, yeah, that's on my I, list I to heard, watch. I, I heard about um yeah, like like Vin, I guess, was yes. like reaching out to yep. uh to Dwayne uh to try to bury the hatchet or blah blah blah. So yeah. I'm can hoping we all, can't we all just get along? I'm hoping that that I know whatever was going on between the two of them, I know that they're both they have big egos, both of them, but I think that Vin Diesel extending the olive branch per se and saying this is like what Paul would have wanted maybe Dwayne will say all right and them saying nobody else can play Hobbs except for you like I'd like to see Cena and Dwayne be in a movie together that would be fun to see the two of them in a movie together (laughs) only if the rock gets to rock bottom Cena through a car then that's the only way I want to see it see the problem (laughs) I would I would look at it like this. I mean, like again, you said like you know that they have they have big egos. Um, obviously, um, you would think hope if you're a fan of those movies. I've never watched one of them. I will always dispose that. Um, but knowing that they've kind of said that it's there's only gonna be what like two more. Two. It's gonna be a a two part. It's gonna right. be like Harry Potter d- divided up into two pieces. Okay. Um, but you would think that they would also like be like, okay, let's put our egos aside and realize that you know, hey, if we all just get along, money. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm sure those movies did not gross as much. Well, they probably did just because Cena was a new element. But uh, I'm sure if The Rock would have been in those in the the last one, it probably would have even been a higher gross. Uh, I I don't know how much it mattered that 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 movie made a ton of money too. So that that series just. Once Dwayne, once they injected Dwayne into it, it changed everything. That yeah, series yeah. might uh, be. Uh, <laughs> it like, needed like it. Lot, like, Whether like a, lot of, like a lot of people have said, he saved the series. He did. He one hundred percent did. Right, but that and that was the problem with, from what I understand, from what I've seen and read, that was the problem that. Vin Diesel didn't like the fact that they had to bring him in to save the series, no, and he didn't want to. It was more. It, it was more I've read. It was more just Dwayne does things one way and Vin does things a different way. It's it's kind of the way they are, like on the set and stuff. I read it's more like something like that. And Dwayne, more than likely, Vin's being the bigger dick, more than likely, because not a lot of people, you don't hear about Dwayne. You, we've never really heard about Dwayne being a dick in wrestling. We don't really hear about him being a dick, like no. in anything. He's like generally looked upon as a nice guy maybe there's the side of him we've never seen but i'm i'm more willing to bet that vin is probably was probably being the bigger dick in this scenario Uh, (laughs) just know what i know yeah knowing what i know about the rocket through instagram and like all that stuff and everything that he puts out there about his work ethic i can only imagine how he is on a set as far as like you know he'll he'll go as long as they need him to he'll do extra shots won't bitch and complain you know that that, i'm not saying that's exactly how he is but i could see that just based on what we physically get to see yes now he could be be completely different he might be like i'm only doing an eight hour day fuck all you you know (laughs) he could be like that who knows you know he could be the complete opposite i just don't see him not wanting to work and not work hard to finish a project or finish a scene or whatever it may be what were you gonna say pat 
Well, I was going to say, there was an article I read many years ago now, probably in Entertainment Weekly, um, where they were talking, it was, this was like, I want to say it was after Triple X came out. So, so Vin Diesel been in the first Fast and Furious and now the first Triple X at this point. And they were like talking about like, you know, where does his career go from here? Um, blah, 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 blah. You know, can he become mm-hmm. the next big a- action star? Because this was at a time where, of course, like the primes of guys like Schwarzenegger and Stallone were over. And everybody was looking for like, who's going to be that next big action star? Mm-hmm. Um, and they were, t- they were talking about him both in optimistic and pessimistic terms saying like, well, you know, he shouldn't attach himself to this director because this director really basically sucks. And if he does that, you know, he's not going to go anywhere, blah, blah, blah. But there was like a quote that they had in there um, that D- Diesel himself apparently made, which was, I'm just trying to make the most of the very little talent that I have. <laughs> now, if he was just saying that, uh in a self-deprecating way well that's good because i think it's important to stay grounded and 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 like that but at the same time you watch vin diesel as an actor he's limited let's just put it that way yes he's not the kind of guy that you can cast in any role in any movie and i'm not saying he's a bad actor because I've seen him give what I thought was a really good acting performance. There was this movie called Find Me Guilty that he made in like the mid 2000s. Yeah, you mentioned that before, yeah. Yeah, so like I definitely know that he can he, he can he can act and everything. But of course, you know, playing Fast and the Furious, you're playing a character that you play movies now. There's only so many things you can do as far as like evolving the character after time. And the evolution of his character seems to be mostly like bringing in previously heretofore unseen family members and you know <laughs> shit like that. So well, yeah. it's not so much that they're it's not so much that they're evolving his character that they're just throwing more shit at his character. So, right. so it's I like could this. understand so I could understand where he could feel like, okay, the rock's coming in. The rock's more versatile, the rock's got more range than I do. That's gonna make me look bad. I could understand where I'm not saying that is happening, of course. I could see where it could yeah, happen. Yeah, the, and the underlying that, all this, that, that could be, there could be some of that going on in this. Yeah. And I mean, if you look at it this way too, um, he's done, you know, once you got to, you know, three or four of those movies, you have now put yourself into a typecasting. Mm-hmm. And you've, whether you're a great actor, not so great actor, in range, whatever you want to call it, even if you have all that, people have only seen you in this type of movie. Now you are going to probably only get a lot of roles in those type of movies, unless you do some kind of indie film and a lot of people see it. And now, okay, people, Oh, you know, big time act uh, or the directors and stuff. See that. Or you do the pacifier. Yeah. Well, mm, (laughs) um, so, (laughs) but uh, you know, and it's that think about it like this too. Look at how many TV actors have ever, you know, the the amount of TV actors that jump into film and are successful are very very few. Not many can do it because most that are TV series actors, a lot, a lot of times they get typecast or they don't think they can or they well, it, try to it, make that jump and it fails because people don't want to see them in a different it's in different. a different character. It's different because then I can tell you from listening to these these girls on the the drama queens on the One Tree Hill thing, they they said. It's it's completely different being on a TV show and preparing for a TV show than it is preparing for a movie. They said it's two completely different worlds, and they've I don't I'm not going to go into specifics, but they've just they've talked about it because all three of them that are on there have done both, and mm-hmm. they said that it's it's completely different. You memorize lines for a movie. It's it's the scenes are divided. They said you're filming sometimes you're filming a whole show in a day. So right. like for a TV show, so it's just not, it's not the same, it's not the same thing. Like, so that's probably why I think people that are good at multitasking and stuff, I think they are better set up for doing either or, or, so that's just me kind of agreeing mm-hmm. with what you're just saying, Jeremy. So yeah. I just, yeah, and, and like Jeremy said, not everybody can make the transition. Like for every George Clooney, 
there's a David Caruso mm-hmm. who, you know, made his mark on NYPD Blue and then he tried to go into films. That movie Jade was not that good. <laughs> Jade, there was the remake of Kiss of Death. It just it just didn't work for him. He transitioned back to TV where he kind of resurrected himself when he got to CSI Miami. Yeah. And a lot of times you find guys who are on like hit TV shows or guys who maybe they started in movies um, and transitioned back to TV when like somebody offered him a role. And I'm not talking to guys who were necessarily movie stars like like Mark Harmon, for example you know, usually played more secondary supporting roles than, than, than feature roles in, uh, in movies and everything. Then along came NCIS and he just left the show, but it's like after 20 years and that show was like consistently uh, after a few years, like in the top among the ratings and it made him a bigger star than he ever was. So, mm-hmm. um, and like, if you go back to like the earliest days of television, most of the people who became like the earliest TV stars were people who had worked in movies, largely in like secondary or supporting roles, like Lucille Ball, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, she was like, the biggest movie star in the world. And then TV comes along. She creates this sitcom with her husband. She becomes arguably the most famous woman on the planet. So, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. there's, uh, there's, uh, you know, there's twists and turns, ebbs and flows, uh, you know, and at some point you have to like pick one or the other. You can't really, you know, you can't be both a TV star and a movie star at the same time. You know, like I don't think Chris Pratt could still be doing Parks and Recreation every week right now, and also be doing the movies that he's doing. So, um, the the, you know. the the thing about Chris Pratt for me that's so funny is, and you guys like before he was on anything, he was on the OC. And that's like the first time I saw Chris Pratt was when he was on the OC. He was only in like the last season of that show, but Mm -hmm. he was just, he played just a weird guy in that show. And it's just funny for me to watch that show and watch him on, because I went back and watched it with Nicole and Mm -hmm. it's funny seeing him on that show. And then the Chris Pratt now (laughs) he was a goofball in the OC and they, they typecast him as a, as a goofy guy that was like a, like uh protesting everything and doing that kind of shit mm. and well the, the ironic thing too is about his, his character on parks and rec he was only supposed to be on for a couple of episodes like you know at the beginning of that show he was uh uh rashida jones's character's boyfriend and he was supposed to be more kind of like an indifferent uh uh not abusive but um like you know the jerk who just like took advantage of her kindness and everything and then he was supposed to leave the show. But for whatever reason, um, they turned him into more kind of like a goofy type character. And he went over the producers and everything that they said, we have to keep him on the show full time. And because he was on the show for years, that's how he started getting like, you know, like the Star Lord role and everything like that. So I, I told when I, we went over when, when my birthday happened, I didn't get to, I got to see Nicole's mother, but I didn't get to see her sister. So we went over her sister's tonight and she's like, I owe you a dinner for your birthday. So we went over there and we got Kentucky fried chicken, but her mother's there lives, lives with her sister. And I, I, I think I, did I tell I, did I tell you guys that my mother-in-law is, she's obsessed with Harry Styles. I mean, I mean, just, mm. just, she's, gone to see him in concert she's going to see him in new york now she's like obsessed with him she's got fucking pillows with his pictures on it and like we're, we're... <laughs> so i told her and i'm not trying to spoil this pat but i was like i saw your boyfriend in the eternals today <laughs> so he was in one of the the i i did i did see that yeah um so... well i can totally understand uh her being obsessed with like harry styles and everything because like Stewie once said on Family Guy, I'm in love with Brian Adams. <laughs> and I told her, I said, once you, once, once you show up, once you're locked in as a Marvel character, you're in. Like, I was like, Harry's going to be in a movie, probably be in, like a prominent role in the movie now since he's playing Thor's son. Like... Well, you know the the funny thing is, um, one of the guys who's in the Eternals, I don't I don't know the character he plays, of course, because I haven't seen the movie. The and I'm gonna mess up the pronunciation because he has one of those goddamn fucking Irish last names. 
uh, Barry uh, Keoghan or, or Kean, I guess it probably is pronounced, being that it's Irish and everything. Um, he's a guy who kind of sort of looks like Ezra Miller in a little bit of ways. Oh, um, okay. Okay. Yeah. I know what we're talking about. Yeah, he, he was also in, uh, he, had, he had a, I guess you could call it a, a, a feature role in um, uh, Dunkirk. Um, that's, that's the one thing where I've definitely seen him before. Who Harry, um, well, Harry Styles was in Dunkirk. Yes, yes. Um, they, they were in disparate scenes and everything. Um, but I've heard a lot of people saying uh, he should play the Joker in any future Pattinson Batman movie. And I'm like, hmm. but why? <laughs> the reason I say that is because I haven't seen him in enough things to know. He was good in Dunkirk. I'll, I'll, that's the only thing that I know for sure that I've seen him in. I mean, he was good. He was good in this too, Pat. Right. So, but I'm so I'm like, I'm, I just don't really quite for sure understand why people are saying this guy should play the Joker. I mean, I don't really know if he has really the face for the Joker, at least the way that I would envision it. Um, I mean, we'll see. But, <laughs> but again, that would be, that would be weird to be in a role which seems like it's going to be. Con- I, I'm assuming again, I haven't seen the movie. Um, that it's going to continue forward in the MCU and then go play such a prominent role in a DC movie at the same time. It's like, I, I think it's hard to straddle that, even though some people obviously are. So, like, because Michael Keaton, we know, is going to be in uh, Morbius. Yes. And of course, we know he's going to be in The Flash. Uh, so. <laughs> You know, of course, his, his role in The Flash might not be any more than just that, you know, and he could continue to play, you know, Vulture, of course, in Marvel movies and everything. Um, but, you know, I guess, you know, we'll see how it goes. I just always find it funny when, like, you know, people are trying to be in, like, you know, both DC and Marvel simultaneously, so. Pat, there's a there's a thing on... Nicole, I, I was sitting here watching it. It was only, like, 15 minutes. It was on Disney Plus. It was about Boba Fett. That was pretty good. Uh, yeah, I, I I saw something about it, but I didn't I didn't watch that yet. Um, it, it was short. It was pretty good. They just they showed that they said like five different people have like worn that costume, and they they showed the the kid that played you know Django or that played Jan, like Boba Fett, the the kid that played him. They showed and, him. And, um, uh, Attack of the Clones. You mean? Yeah. Oh, okay. He's a lot older now. He's an adult well, now. So <laughs> really? <laughs> so no way. Just... Yeah, yeah. He, he he was he was kind of annoying, unfortunately, in Attack of the Clones. All did right. you get did you get the Boba Fett ornament, Pat? I Walmart? assume so, because like I, again, I did pick up my uh remaining ornaments that i had pre-ordered today i i i believe it was in with those i i didn't like pick stuff out of the bag and look at them all yet i wanted the, i did. wanted the super nintendo one and my mom said she can't find it anywhere so i had to come up with a fallback so i picked the boba fett one so i i think i saw the super nintendo and the spot on like the so i guess that one sold pretty well i mean i got the regular nes one last year or the year before whenever they came out with that one but i never had a super nintendo so you know i wasn't going to get that one go ahead jeremy sorry i keep throwing tidbits out there sorry that's all right so i wanted to get into some sports um since the <laughs> where yeah I, I just wanted to kind of acknowledge this real quick so <laughs> um sam huff uh passed away yesterday he was a uh, Hall of Fame linebacker from in oh. the fifties and sixties with the uh, with the Giants and and Washington. Um, he was eighty seven, so he had a good full life. Um, uh, he was like ranked in the NFL's top one hundred when they did that list for you know the whole history of the NFL. Um, but his biggest significance to the game was in nineteen sixty. Um, they did this special on like CBS News, I think it was called "The Violent World of Sam Huff." where what they did was they wired him up. This was the first time they had ever done something like this. And you got to remember, this is 1960. Mm-hmm. This was revolutionary technology. And now, mm-hmm. of course, it's in every game. 
but they wired him up for sound and everything so that you could really get the feel of what it was like to be an NFL player and an NFL linebacker. Um, you know, they had him wired up at like practice. And I think it was like an exhibition game and it really brought, uh, you know, like football was just really becoming much more into the public consciousness at this point. This was like two mm-hmm. years after the Colts giants, NFL championship, greatest game ever played, which a lot of people always attribute to like the rise of the NFL uh, especially versus baseball at the time. Mm-hmm. But this also, this, this was the first thing that like brought fans like really onto the field, but the, like, you know, feel the hits and, you know, just, you know, just how, you know, brutal the game could be and just how, how hard hitting the game could be. And uh, Sam Huff was also one of the precious few players in NFL history who could neutralize Jim Brown because really nobody could. Jim Brown was that dominant at the time, but, right. but Sam Huff, but Sam Huff always had a knack for, like stopping Jim Brown as much as anybody stopped him. So, so he passed away and because of his significance, significance to the game's history than there, I just, I just wanted to throw that out there. Well, Pat, all I can say is thank you for starting off our segment in sports with the death of somebody. And to that, I have to say this. You are a real hooker and I'm going to slap you in public. (laughs) So anyway, I I, I don't think I've been turning any tricks lately. (laughs) I'm leaving that one alone. <laughs> well, Somebody said I'm a real hooker. <laughs> so anyways, <laughs> but anyways, so uh, since we are recording late Sunday, we most of the games have been played, so that's kind of nice. So we can kind of go over these. We got we had the Ravens lose to the Dolphins, which I think is fucking hilarious. It it, it really is. Whenever you see games like that, where it's like going into what everybody is like, oh, that's not going to work, and then the exact opposite result happens, it's always amusing. Yeah, and that's been like the NFL has been weird like that this season. I mean, it it has its times, like a week here or a week there, but it seems to be like a reoccurring theme. Like the team that should absolutely win somehow chokes it and freaking well, okay. loses. Last weekend, that happened with Denver and the Cowboys and the Bills and the Jaguars. Like that, ha- it happened multiple times last Sunday. Yeah, uh, the Titans won in a close one at twenty-three to twenty-one against the Saints, but they held on. The Bills redeemed themselves, which I would hope so because they beat the Jets forty-five to seventeen. Right, that shit. J E T S suck suck suck. <laughs> the yes, Cowboys they do. Also, the Cowboys redeemed themselves by blowing yeah. out the Falcons. Yes, which should have happened. Um, but I mean, they they blew them away when I I when I got I got when I got home, and I turned on the you know I hadn't been looking at the scores. I turned on and I said, "Let's see what's going on with scores." And I saw thirty six to three. I just went, "Well, I guess the Cowboys were pissed off after last week." <laughs> yeah, they ended up being forty three to three, so that was crazy. But the surprise game of the week, I'm going to leave that one for last. Aha, gotcha. Um, the Colts won against the Jaguars. <laughs> the Washington football team beat the Buccaneers. I don't know how the hell that happened, but uh, yeah, yeah that was... I'm, I'm upset about that for two reasons. One being that since I'm a Giants fan, I have to root for Washington to lose because you always root yes. for your division and teams to lose. The Giants play at Tampa next Monday night, a game where they're already facing uphill battle just because Tampa is clearly a better team mm-hmm. and it's on the road. The last thing you want is for Tampa to be coming into that game off of a loss. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to be good. Yeah, uh, so it's like there. Any thought I had of um, you know the Giants possibly having a chance of winning that game thrown out the window after today's result. There's no way Tampa will allow themselves to lose to two inferior NFC East teams in consecutive weeks. So yeah. And then you had the Patriots just roll over the clowns. They took the clowns behind the woodshed. Yep. They beat them like a redhead stepchild. Uh, that, 45 that, that, to 7. That was a thanking. Yep. Not that I'm complaining about that one. And here's another game that blew my mind. And it I didn't even realize that this happened. Game. Cam Newton makes his comeback with the Carolina Panthers. They also get McCaffrey back. And they destroy the Cardinals 34 to 10. But they didn't have Kyler Murray and DeAndre Hopkins. So I was like, gonna say, you yeah, know, the Cardinals were without their quarterback and obviously their their best receiver. So 
slight asterisk on that game. And Newton only actually threw four passes and had three carries. Like PJ Walker was still doing the majority of the playing. Uh, I, I think getting McCaffrey back was uh, was probably 150 total yards. Um, but yeah, I did get some kind of like alert on my phone about like Newton scored or contributed to touchdowns like the first two times he touched mm-hmm. the ball. So I was like, oh, well, hey, you know, surprise, surprise, good for him. But yeah, again, Arizona starting Colt McCoy. And then they even, I guess, pulled McCoy and put some guy named Chris Streveler, who I have literally <laughs> never heard of, into the game, into the game at quarterback. I mean, so uh oh, yeah, this guy went to South Dakota. That's why I've never even heard of him. Yeah. Well, um, it just goes to show you yeah. like some offenses, they just schemes only work with the right personnel. And evidently you needed the right personnel for the Cardinals to win. So, you know. Well, and and again, yeah, if you're it once again shows how quarterback is the most important position in all of sports, uh, in all of team sports. Uh, and when you don't have your starter, you're going to suck. Look at what Seattle's been without Russell Wilson. Well, you know, they, look at what they, they got, were with Russell Wilson today. Well, they lost but, 17 to zero. Right. Oh, he played today? I was not aware. Yeah, yes. but he came back and played at Green Bay. So it's not like he came back and played it in a game. Like, that's a tough place to play, whether you're healthy or not. So that's not – I agree. Idea. And it did snow there today, so that did not help things. Um, uh, let's yeah, see. The yeah, Vikings ugly, beat the yeah, Chargers. He, he had – Russell had an ugly stat line, too. 20, 40 for 161 yards, no touchdowns, two picks, got sacked three times. Yeah, uh, he he he, looked, he 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 bit the big one today. I oh, saw uh, some – Welcome back, Russell. I saw somebody <laughs> somebody – one of their defensive guys intercepted dipshit Aaron Rodgers in the end zone. He did the discount double check. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you <laughs> had a uh, scoreboard. <laughs> I know, but it's still funny. Anytime anybody makes fun of that dipshit, I'm happy. So, yeah. yeah. Then we had the Eagles beat. I'm sorry, Matt. AJ, the Eagles beat the Broncos 30 to 13, which was, I was glad to see that because they, the Eagles needed something. They needed something. I mean, it was when it was 20 to 13 and the Broncos on that third and one fumbled or whatever. And the Eagles returned it for a touchdown. That was the game. Like they could have <laughs> drove down and tied the game. So like that the game was over at that point, I think. So, yeah. I think and that was, I, a, think, I think it could have been worse too, because I'm pretty sure I saw when I was, when I was eating dinner, I saw um, Hertz through a, uh, pretty long pass down the sideline into the end zone and the Eagles receiver just flat out dropped it. Yeah. Yeah. Scan, um, Watkins, Quez Watkins could have, uh, if he wouldn't, he kind of alligator armed it is the way That's I looked at I it. When I saw the replay, I'm like, didn't extend all the way. Be fully extended. And it's like, it wasn't like he was about to get hit. Yeah. No, he just, he definitely did not fully extend. He definitely had a step on the defender and could have probably easily scored a touchdown. Um, the Chiefs right now are beating the Raiders twenty-seven to fourteen at the end of the three. So it looks like the Chiefs are kind of getting back on track here. Excellent. The Giants beat the Raiders one week and they start a free fall. <laughs> <laughs> but the game of the week so far for oh my god, what the fuck just happened here is the Lions and the Steelers tying at sixteen <laughs> points. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> well, Roethlisberger didn't play. I know, yeah. I know. I mean, and we know um, that's a big deal, but I mean, still, it's the Detroit Lions. Like, how bad do you have to be with your second with your second string quarterback to not put up more than sixteen points in the Lions? Hey, this is progress for Lions fans everywhere because <laughs> you're they, oh oh and one. <laughs> they did not. Lose. Yeah, not not oh oh they're oh eight and one. Sorry, oh eight and one. <laughs> yes, somebody well, well, hey, think, think about it. this saves them from becoming the f- first team to go oh and sixteen twice. Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> yes, AJ. P- Pittsburgh. Somebody wrote an article this week. Somebody somewhere said Pittsburgh's record is they're not as good as their record. Like th- they said uh, that their is their record. I, so. I, I don't think so. Yeah, they're five, three, and one now. But every time I've turned them on, they look pretty shitty. So, I mean yeah. they they really they really 
shouldn't have beaten the Bears the other night on Monday night, but some dipshit for the Bears got a fucking taunting penalty. <laughs> like, like the, they would have had to punt or kick a field goal or whatever, and he got a taunting penalty, and then Pittsburgh ended up scoring on that drive. So, <laughs> I mean, I'm happy that the Bears lost too, but it was just Pittsburgh could have lost that game. You know what? And, and think, and taunting penalties in football. This is starting to fucking drive me nuts. Like the whole taunting thing is a little fucking they're get I feel like it's getting out of hand. No, like, it is. Play, I, I it's part like, of the game. So like I think that you have to because the one the Bears guy, all he did was like look at the sideline and make a motion to the sideline. He didn't even like taunt the guy he did something to. So it was like he the ref saw him taunting the sideline for Pittsburgh. Yeah, well, like it's, well here's here's my quick little take on those taunting penalties because this affected the Giants in their game against Kansas City um, a couple of weeks ago when uh, Elijah Penny was like the fullback. He caught a nice pass for a first down, and then he gave all the yardage back because he got up and he jawed in the face of the Kansas City defender. And that seems to be what the trigger is, is that if you go and you jaw directly at another player, coach, or whatever for the opposing team, it's like automatically going to draw the penalty. So two thoughts about it. Number one, I'm sure just like any new rule change, they'll call it all the time for the first couple of years it's into effect. Then about three or four years down the road, they'll start forgetting about it because there's been so many different like rule changes over the years where they've done that. Like the Eric Williams rule where like offensive linemen like slapping defensive players in, in the helmet. They changed that to make that a rule, and they called it all the time for the first couple of years. Now you barely ever see that called. Uh, yeah. The horse collar, the horse collar. I think you, there's been times I've seen people get away with horse collar tackles, though you don't see them much anymore. They, I think yeah. maybe the guys have finally learned. But the other thing too, if you know that this is what the rule is, that like if you go and you start jawing at somebody on the other team after you've done something, made a play, whatever, so that you know that it's going to draw the flag, can you not? <laughs> Keep it in your pants, so to say, for, for, for five seconds. Stop whipping that shit out. <laughs> go go back to the huddle and start hoofing it around with your teammates instead of hoofing it in the face of the opposition where you know it's going to draw the fucking penalty. It's like you can't control yourself. On the, I understand football is an emotional sport, but seriously, you just can't keep it under control for five seconds and not do it at the guy who you just beat or whatever. I don't understand why it's so hard for some players to do that. So, well, and see, here's the thing. Like I get taunting to a point. Like if somebody's like really really jawn at somebody and really getting in their face and, and and stuff, like it's uncalled for. But I saw an Eagles defender, Edwards, get a taunting penalty and he didn't really even do anything. Like it, it was so minuscule and what they don't see, which you have to see on the replay, is actually because it was against the same team. It was against Kansas City. He made a good play, stopped the first down, I think. And what you don't see, you have to watch, like I said, you have to watch the replay, is the Kansas City guy initiated the fucking problem, like the whole taunting thing. But of course, it's always the second person because that's the one that always gets caught. So that's why, that's another reason why I don't like the taunting because. It goes back. It's both ways. It's both people who are usually doing it. It's not usually one person. It's pro usually the person that makes the play, and then the other person gets up and jaws, and then the other person jaws back to him. It's part of the game. It always has been. So they really, unless it's something really, really egregious, like where the guy is just not letting it go and like being a dick about it, then I can see it. Like you're over, you're stepping over. It's not like jaw, jaw, okay, done, and everybody goes back to the huddle. Like when T.O. went, went and on the Dallas and posed on the and then got jacked. <laughs> there definitely should have been penalties on that both ways. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's if taunting crazy. was in yeah, if there was a taunting penalty, that would have deserved a taunting flag, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think I think with that it was again, I don't know what the rules were about that kind of stuff. So the refs would probably have been looking at each other like, are we supposed to throw a flag on this? <laughs> but then, you know, when, when George Teague, I think it was, came and just, you know, blasted him and everything, I think the refs were probably going, well, the fucker got what he deserved. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was one of the few times where I was, like, applauding a cowboy, you know? <laughs> yeah, that, exactly. Like, I didn't applaud them very much, but that was well-deserved. Like, 
there, there's, I mean, in the NFL, we've seen a lot of different goofy antics and stuff like that, but that is probably the all time number one antic that you're like, yep, that happened. And that exactly. And what the end result was, was well-deserved, like just ridiculous, but it's easy for us to be too harsh on George Teague. After all, he simply did what many of us only dreamed of doing. Blasting yeah, to you. yeah, blasting T.O. <laughs> it's funny. I've heard, uh, speaking of T.O., he, and I don't know, maybe he could. I, I, I want to say he's, his, his time has caught up with him. But if you listen to him talk, he'll tell you otherwise. Because he truly believes that he could step onto any NFL team and compete right now at, a, at like the high level. And maybe he could. I don't know. I'm not saying he can't. Hey. But I, I doubt, like AJ, just I doubt it. Like just the, yeah. the, the, and not to say he's never was never talented because he sure the hell was. But to say at what what is he probably close to forty? I think now. Oh, he's got to be more than forty. No, he didn't start in the NFL. Well, maybe he did. Maybe he started in the NFL when I was in high school. Somebody I mean, look at look, look up his rookie football, year. He's in the Football Hall of Fame already. So I mean, that means right. it's been more than five years since his playing career ended. T.O. will turn 48 next month. Holy <laughs> balls. Yes. So, yeah, no. Now, now, now that I know his real age, and like I said, that dude is, like, if you see him, he's fit as fucking shit. But there's a difference between f- being fit and being able to play at a high level in the NFL. So, yeah, I think it's funny when I hear him say, you know, I could go step on any team and, and, and play. I'm like, oh, okay, sure, you could. I mean, I think you probably think you could. At the end of Randy Moss's career, when he like jumped around to a couple of teams, he would show those. He would have moments where he'd look like mm-hmm. the Randy Moss that I remember. But even he, like you know, he was he was on the the Niners that lost to the Ravens in the Super Bowl that year when the lights went out and stuff. And I just he had moments, flashes of of Randy Moss that year. But I still never understood to this day why if you have the ball first and goal in the red zone and you have Randy Moss on your team. Why did you not try to throw him the ball once in the end zone? That guy's the greatest like red zone receiver of all time. They didn't even try to throw him the ball, just throw it up to him and let him go to try to get it once. What do I, I, yeah. I could not believe that they it's didn't just, even go to him. <laughs> it's just like the Seahawks when they didn't right. try and run it with Marshawn Lynch. Yeah. Like what the hell were you thinking? What yeah, the hell was that? No, that's the dumbest play call in Super Bowl history. I don't, I don't, even, <laughs> I don't know if anybody's ever going to argue that there was a dumber play call than that in, in the Super Bowl. <laughs> Should we throw the ball to Moss here? No. It's just what they'd be expecting us to do. <laughs> sometimes you do what they're expecting you to do. So sometimes it's okay. Yeah, some, sometimes you should be taking the attitude Hey, I know exactly what they expect us to do, but they can't stop it. So fuck them. Yeah, because I mean, I've ne- I like I think Randy Moss is super talented. I wouldn't say I'm his greatest fan, but there's one thing that Randy Moss was very, very fucking good at, and that was the jump ball in the end zone. Yeah, without a shadow of a fucking doubt, he was pro- he is probably the best that I've no, ever seen. Is. If like I said, if somebody wants to tell me that Jerry Rice was a better route runner than him, that's fine. I'm not going to argue with you. I think Moss was the best red zone receiver. And he was one of the best deep ball receivers I've ever seen. Like he, those were the two things Moss was really good at. So, yeah. Yeah. so and, and, just, you know. and just real quick, getting back to To for a second, um, you know, again, I'm sure he does think he, he could still play, but as we all know, oh, yeah, I've heard him say it. <laughs> as we all know, there's a difference between being in shape and being in football shape. And oh, yeah. I don't know anybody who's age 48 who could be considered to be in football shape unless you're like a kicker <laughs> lasted to that age. Well, and, and, and here's so, the thing. I'm not, I'm not even sure then, but, but, you know, again, T.O. is also, of course, he's, a, he's still causing controversy and shit even after his playing career because you got to remember, this is a guy who whined that, you know, they didn't put him into the Hall of Fame on his first year of eligibility. Yes, yeah, so we talked uh, about that podcast. Which, yeah, which, of course, again, was because of his – you know, is off the field shit. And, you know, the voters tend to make guys like that wait a year or two. Um, but then, of course, he skipped his induction ceremony to hold his own induction ceremony 
yeah you know so <laughs> it's like you're not the most popular fucker in the world you know and, it, and i doubt he's even still been to the hall of fame to just acknowledge that you know he's in it and his bust is there and everything so and while we're on the subject of football and controversial players uh i took a look into and watched the like mini series, I guess you could call it, or docu series, maybe is a better term for it, for Colin Kaepernick's Colin Black and White. Uh, it was very interesting. I'll just docu leave it at that. Doc, docu series is probably the best uh, terminology. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was interesting. Um, there were some things I was like, oh my God, what the hell is he trying to, why is he trying to make that comparison? Or why is he putting it like that? I think this might be very highly exaggerated point. Um, but I encourage anybody to just go watch it and form your own opinion. I'm not going to talk about it anymore because it's very controversial. It's very, um, politically kind of driven too. Um, but I think I understood the premise behind what he was trying to do. I just don't necessarily maybe agree with everything. So in, in what he I, yeah, I don't know, I even know how to put it, but I just I can say I don't necessarily agree with every, but I can understand. I have an understanding. Yeah, and I, uh, I I would probably agree. I haven't watched it, but I mean I'm just remembering during like the time when it was, you know, like all anybody talked about. I was I would say I was generally on his side. Um, but there were some times where I went, hey, I think you went a little too far on that one, you know? So, and the, the, the reason why I said it then is, you know, not necessarily so much because I disagreed with what he said, but I'm like, you ain't going to get people on your side saying that. And I think mm -hmm. it's, I honestly think it's, it's more important to, you know, for this issue to get people on your side first and then get outlandish or controversial with it but you know yeah well there was I might have part... to, I'll, I'll probably have to like track that down and that then. well in the very first portion the very first one he makes a comparison between the nfl combine uh and how people are put on show there you know to show their talent they're measured and everything like that which is how the combine is combine has always been you know they're they're measuring the talent to see you know who's the best for that position that they want to draft and pay millions of dollars to uh he compared that to slaves at a slave auction being sold so i was like this is odd and that's like the big thing that a lot of people have been talking about because it's the very first thing in the very in the docuseries it's the very first episode the first 10 minutes is that i was like well, this is an interesting way to start this off. So, yeah. And, and, and that's, that's why I want people to watch it and form their own opinion. And, and that's something where I kind of get what he's saying. But there are plenty of differences between the two things, which makes that comparison more than a bit extreme. Yeah. You know? So it's like i understand where you're coming from i don't think it's 100 percent accurate i think it's a little frankly disingenuous too to a certain extent because let's face it if you make it in the nfl even if you're like the lowliest guy on the roster you're being compensated <laughs> and you're not literally in chains <laughs> or restricted to this plantation or whatever. So it's just yeah, that's it's, that, it's, that, that's that that's that that's a bit much even for me, a, a very liberal person. So <laughs> yeah, so uh, like I said, I encourage anybody to watch it. May form your own opinion. See if yeah. you agree with Colin or if it's crazy and you think it's nuts. But either way, all right. So no we did I, have... I, I i i agree i think that's a good take and you know thank you for letting our audience know about it so baseball um the world series finished up um i think when did it finish up i don't know i didn't see when it finished up because i don't um, really pay attention to baseball it's, it's been a week and a half yeah. was it a week and a half was it before our last podcast was it over baseball's done. it was 
Oh, well, since we didn't mention it on our last podcast, the Atlanta Braves did win the World Series. I think we did talk about it. I mean, now the big thing with baseball, of course, is that the uh, the collective bargaining agreement expires on December 1st. There might be a lockout. The thought is that there will be a lockout, which doesn't necessarily mean there will be an interruption to games come April. No, it's a long way away. We got a long way before that happens. It, it depends upon how they negotiate. There's been, I've seen vague details of offers that have been thrown back and forth. It doesn't really sound like they're anywhere close to an agreement, to be honest. I'm not sure how much they've actually done as far as like face-to-face negotiations have been, mm-hmm. um, uh, you know, have been, and obviously they need to hammer out the details. I do think both sides realize that, I mean, for, for one thing, again, if there is a lockout, then that's officially a work stoppage. And of course, there hasn't been one in baseball since the 1994 strike, of course. I do think both sides realize they can't afford to allow an interruption of games to occur again. So I do think they'll come to a deal. It's just, it's going to be like, um, how much of an impact is it going to have on like, you know, of course the, the hot stove league as it's called, because there's been speculation about how many trades could we see? How many big free agent signings could we see before December 1st? Because anything can still happen uh you know before then now of course if there's no agreement and there's a lockout then all that activity basically ceases as far as i know teams can't even talk to free agents teams can't even talk to each other about making trades like no activity can Mm -hmm. can occur so let's say they don't come to an agreement until like say february when spring training starts like two weeks later you know um that'll be kind of chaotic too with guys trying to with with teams finally deciding okay these are the trades we got to make or like these are the guys we got to sign and then the free agents are out there saying you know i got to get myself signed real quick quick here so i don't miss any training camp time and blah 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 so it's obviously going to be a very interesting situation uh to play out and we'll see what happens this week of course they announce all the awards winners so uh, you know, they they prime us for these now by announcing the finalists for each <laughs> award, which is which is just that they what it basically is, is they just say these are the guys who finished in the top three of the voting. So, right. Yeah. Um, I'll I'll being a Yankee fan, I'll be curious to see if Garrett Cole does win the Cy Young, but I have a feeling they're going to give it to Robbie Ray of Toronto. And I'm very interested to see who wins the AL MVP, whether it's uh, Vlad Guerrero Jr. or uh, Otani personally. I'd have gone with Vlad, but I have a feeling Otani will win. Right. And I'm interested to see on the NL side if um, Bryce Harper wins the NL MVP because he had one hell of a season, and but his team yeah. didn't make the playoffs, and you well, know, well, so there's the downfall of that. Right, but here's the thing, and this is what you reminded me of. I think what I saw was that the three finalists in both leagues – for the uh the mvp were all on non-playoff teams wow. I think they said, and i think they said that this is going to be the first time ever in the history of the mvp awards where that's going to have occurred so i was like bah? You know, <laughs> yeah yeah that's that, not that, a normal that, occurrence that pretty, it, ugh, sorry it is it is pretty amazing because you know, obviously, like, you know, playoff performance does not factor into these awards. They're voted on before the playoffs start and everything, but they tend to favor guys who are on teams who made the playoffs just really out of more or less, you know, natural, uh, you know, finishes. Like, like the guys who are on, who have the best years are guys who are on, like, the best teams. But, yeah, the finalists in the American League are, are Vlad Jr., Otani, and Marcus Simeon, also of Toronto. The Blue Jays and the Angels didn't make the playoffs. And then in the NL, it's Harper, the Phillies, Juan Soto, the Nationals, and Fernando Tatis Jr., the Padres. None of those teams made the playoffs. So, yeah, that's um, interesting. Yeah, it's a, it, it is a very interesting uh, anomaly, I guess, best word to really say it. But, uh, you know, hey, it's, again, I've always been the guy who says it's not best player on the best team, it's best player. Like when a- everybody made the big deal about when A Rod won the award when the Rangers finished in last place. And that happened also back in like, I think it was like 
Andre Dawson with the Cubs. Like he had the big monster year when he came to the Cubs from the Expos, but the Cubs still finished in last place. And it's like, yeah, their team sucked. He was still great. So you're going to penalize him for having bad teammates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not fair. Yeah. AJ, did you have something you wanted to chime in with? Uh, not about baseball. I was trying oh, okay. to, I was going to, I was going to tell you there's at least a one or two basketball things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's jump into basketball. Cause Pat, uh, Mahomes is, Pat Mahomes is 400 yards and five touchdowns now. <laughs> oh, Jesus. If you can find the clip, Jeremy, the, Fucking that idiot for the Nuggets, that Jock. Oh, Jonic, Jockic, the guy that won the MVP last year. He fucking like cheap shotted Markeith Morris from behind. It was I oh, watched I, that, I, I, I think and I it was hilarious. It. it was bad. It was a cheap yeah. shot. The MVP shouldn't be doing stuff like that. No, I I agree. Nobody nobody should be taking cheap shots. From behind. <laughs> so. He got fouled. Yeah, yeah. He got, yeah. He got, he got f- fouled hard, but at least the guy was facing him when he did it. And then he turned his back and walked away. And Jokic went up and fucking like shoulder blocked him from behind. Or and he got one game suspension. He should have got like a five game suspension for that. My God, he Pearl Harbor him. Oh, the, oh, that son of a bitch! All right, here we go. The one minute clip. I'll I'll get I'll play this one because this is. I, I thought it was very entertaining. I don't agree with what happened, but you know it is. And I don't like I don't is. like Morris Brothers either. So I'm not trying to defend them. I just think it's it's bad when somebody cheap shot somebody else from behind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah, it's if, not... I, if, I saw, if I saw a guy on my team doing that, I'd be pissed off. And this is the guy who won the MVP last year too. So this is my other. Yeah. Right. This is the guy who's supposed to be the, the, the most valuable player acting like a fucking five year old kid. All right. So, yeah, I want to see this. There we go. I didn't actually see this. So, there's the block. So, he blocks the guy. Now, it's the, it, like, it's, it, the buzzer was, no, it wasn't even a buzzer beater. No. So, I don't no. even know. I don't know it's what. It's not playing on my side. It, it's not playing anymore, Jeremy. Okay, let me rewind here. We saw a little bit. Okay, now he's yeah. We oh, just, yeah, just let me rewind it here. So probably your weak ass internet. Yeah, it kind of seemed to skip ahead there. Yeah, maybe find a different feed of it, Jeremy. It might just be that feed. Well, I've it, got a lot going on here. <laughs> I'm, I'm Facebook, I'm live in it, and I'm trying to play this clip. So let me just let me try again here. Let me do something. Let me do something. That's let funny. Me... I'm on my on my computer. I went to YouTube. I just started typing in Jokic, and the first thing Jokic. <laughs> That's what I call him. Well, isn't that how how's it pronounced? Jokic. I think his name's Jokic, but I just call him Jokic. Oh, okay. All right. So here, let me try this again. I legitimately I didn't know that's how his name was pronounced. I apologize. You continue to call him that. So yeah, it's well, anyway, it's funny. I like calling him Jock Itch. <laughs> well, yeah. the, the, the first thing that pops up then is uh is Jokic versus Morris. Yeah, it's like the first thing. It's so pow- So here, maybe this will play better this yeah. time. All right, this looks better. Yeah. So I don't know what he was trying to do there. <laughs> no. But the guy just plows into him and then he plow then he just clubs him. Yeah, well, like, he, he, he that was, was a hard like, foul there. He was trying to stop the play. Yeah, but then he's given, then he's given like the Monty Brown pounce, you know, with uh, and you know, and again, the they're up blind by blind side, blind side cheap by job. What are you doing yeah. when you're up by twenty, going after somebody like that? No, 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 no class. No, one, class. we got one game suspension for that. That should have been way well, more. My, three. What my favorite part is. Is that Morris here, one of the Morris, uh, Markeef Morris, like NBA players have become the greatest actors of I'm hurt so bad. I'm so injured. Uh, no, 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 no. NBA players will still never have anything on male soccer players. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. But this guy literally like fucking this fucking clip's fucking a minute female, long. Female, female soccer players are still tougher than male soccer but player. His teammate helped him get up. He's down on the ground. He's rolling around, holding his face. He's still down. 
the trainer's over there. He's probably talking to him. Okay, like, that was I a hard know. foul. That was a hard foul, but this is still unnecessary. It's, it's, right. it's so but, unnecessary. So here's my thing. Like I, I agree. Okay. Hard foul one was unnecessary. Didn't need to foul him like that. Give him a and flagrant I, foul. That's fine. He was gonna get a flagrant foul for that. Right. So that's what he should have gotten. Right. And I don't and like I don't understand like why he was doing that foul. That made no sense. I don't I don't like, either. I don't need so so you know, bad on him. But I one hundred percent agree, like his recourse, his recourse to it was to body check him from behind. Like what but sense does that make? Yeah. Right. And think about it. You don't see it coming. I mean, depending upon how you go and hit the fucking floor, you can cause much more serious injury. Like if he goes down and he take like let's say I don't know exactly how it played out. But well, we're gonna see. Boom. Yeah. Boom. If he takes the full impact of this, he, he he doesn't, okay, luckily. But let's say but but let's say that because he didn't see it coming. When he goes down, he hits the he he hits the court floor, you know, smack on his head. Like his oh, head's yeah. the first thing that hits. You can go serious fucking injury that way. Oh yeah. Really? Yeah, it could have been that, a lot worse. Yeah, that's I mean, that's just that wow, that's 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 total bullshit. And I would have to say right now that I have absolutely no respect for that guy. No. I don't like him. I don't like him. I don't think he should have won the MVP last year. I think Steph should have won the MVP. I think Steph didn't win the MVP because they didn't make the playoffs. So the NBA is worse about that than baseball is because the NBA doesn't give the MVP to somebody unless they make the playoffs. It's like a written rule in the NBA. Yeah. So well, you still have, and you also still have more teams making the playoffs in the NBA than MLB too. So yeah, so but, it's but just, yeah, you know. But so, that was that happened, and then. I, I, I don't really want to go into this other one until Joe's on, but now dipshit Pippen has come out and he started talking shit about Jordan. His book came out, Pippen. Yes. I, I, I saw, I saw that. that too, and I was just saying to myself, I don't want to, I will save that because I want Joe to be on here for that because I'm really curious. Tune in next you. week when we talk about yes. Scotty Pippen. Cause, cause <laughs> Joe, uh, like, we'll, we'll, we'll have, we'll have not, to drop that in during watching the Survivor Series. We will. Be more I, interesting. I will. Because Joe <laughs> likes both guys. So I want to see where I think Pippen crossed the line for sure. I think Joe's going to get irritated at some of the stuff Pippen's saying. So I, 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 I kind of, uh, I, I kind of felt that way too, just from the cursory stuff that I saw. And, and I didn't, and I didn't see all of the last dance and everything, but it's like, yeah, you know what, Scotty, of course it's about Michael. You know why? He was Michael fucking Jordan. Okay. <laughs> it's like if you ever saw Bohemian Rhapsody, the movie is really about Freddie, Freddie Mercury. Mercury. <laughs> not, not, not as much about the whole band. With all due respect to the other three guys in Queen, they originally wanted the movie to be with Freddie dying halfway through and then showing how the band persevered after his death. Nobody that would have made for a terrible movie. Yeah, it would have made for a terrible movie. That fucking movie. I'm sorry. And it's not like you guys did anything tremendously awesome after Freddie died. <laughs> it's no, not if like it wouldn't have been for Freddie Mercury, that group wouldn't have been what they were. Right. It's, He's it's what not, made that group special. It's it's not like the Rolling Stones carrying on after Brian Jones died. I mean, they had fired him from the band. And he was also as great of a musician as he was. He was not the lead singer and the front man and everything. It's like, show me a band whose front man died, died. And then the band continued on with as much, if not better success. It's a very short list. I'm thinking, you know, like ACDC pops into mind. Uh, and that's only because it happened so early in their career. Yes. Um, you could say Pink Floyd, but Sid Barrett didn't actually die then. You know, it was that was just a weird thing. So was, again, whose front man died in the band went on to be again as successful or, or better than before. It's you know, it would have been like again, would the Rolling Stones have tried to continue if Mick Jagger died in 1969? Who knows? Maybe would they have been as good? I kind of doubt it. <laughs> no, probably so. not. So, anyways, that's we'll save that particular yeah, topic for yeah, joe being the big bulls fan yeah his opinion i think is uh is definitely much required for that the warriors just, did just 
they just smoked the Bulls Friday night too. Curry had like forty. <laughs> Ooh, so, I've got one Knicks NBA thing around. I got to talk about. The, the Knicks are coming back down to earth pretty quickly, so. <laughs> So, talking about the NBA, Westbrook. What a piece of crap. (laughs) That's all I had to say. I was waiting for AJ. What what did I I miss now? So, he had a press conference. The uh, Lakers had just, I think they got blown out. They, They melted down. They were winning against, like, Oklahoma City or the Timberwolves. They were Timberwolves. They were winning, and they melt. They had a complete meltdown. Now LeBron wasn't playing. So. Yes. Oh shit! I was, I was bitching about the Hornets beating the Knicks. The Hornets beat the Warriors. Yes, tonight. they did. Um, okay. So, so Westbrook has a you know press conference. Like almost every player that has a pre- they always almost every player has a press conference after the game. His press conference was three minutes. For the entire three minutes, this is what he was doing. Looking at his phone, barely paying attention to the questions, wasn't really answering the questions. And I and I have no problem. If he doesn't really want to answer questions, he wants to give some kind of crazy ass thing that he wants to throw out there. I don't give a shit. Like I personally yeah, don't he, care. But isn't he required to? Yeah, like, he's required, required to have a press conference. The NBA, that, they, that they have to talk to the press and they get fined yes. if they don't. Yeah, they, it's a, I think it's a requirement in the NBA. I'd have to look it up, but I'm pretty sure it's a requirement. I mean, I, I'll so, be honest, I, I kind of hate that requirement, but but so it, the big thing is, is the press feels like he was being rude and inconsiderate to the fact that they have a job to do and their job is to interview you. His job is to play basketball. Okay. And I agree. He doesn't have to be nice to them. He doesn't have to be cordial. Right. You know, I, I don't, you know, but you could at least do them the courtesy of at least looking at them when you're talking to them. Like be cordial, be cordial in the fact that you you know that they have a job to do, even if you don't really want to answer their questions. Because Barry Bonds, as we know, was not the greatest person with the media. Like, he was not media friendly. And Westbrook doesn't have to be. That's his choice. But he can at least do, give them the due respect that this is their job and they're going to ask him questions. If he wants to answer them like a butthead, whatever. I don't personally care. But, and that's yeah, not to say that the um, media, the, like the, the, the writers and stuff, can't be jackasses too. Because they definitely can. By all means, can they? But yeah, at least give them the respect that they're giving you of saying, "Hey, this guy's here. Let's. He's got three minutes. We got three minutes. Let's ask him a couple questions." There, I mean, there's a long history of, and again, any sport of contentious relationships between a player and members of the media. But I think in almost every instance, the player is the one who starts it. Like the player treats one media member like shit, and then the media member is kind of you know, rally around together, (laughs) rally around that person. And then they'll start being a little more, they'll start being hostile to the player, uh, you know, warranted or not. And then the player's hostility gets raised and then we have this vicious cycle, but, you know, then we have have Deion Sanders up and ice on Tim McCarver. So, well, you're, (laughs) you're, you're, you're a real man, Dion. (laughs) <laughs> but there's 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 guys who didn't necessarily like uh there, there's two guys i'm thinking of in baseball a- albert bell um he had a horrible relationship with the media and a lot of people feel that's why he dropped off the hall of fame ballot so quickly because his stats are actually because when you also take into account that his career ended pretty suddenly with the hip injury his stats are actually such that you go hmm maybe he does deserve a little more mm-hmm. call consideration that he received, but I think he dropped off the ballot after I think two years. So like he fell below the 5% rule. But then there was also Eddie Murray. Eddie Murray didn't have, I think like an adversarial relationship with the press, but I think he had a bit of a, of a, of a contentious one in that he didn't, he just, he was, he was a little, he was a little prickly, um, you know, and he didn't always like being, you know, talking to the press or I think he had some issues with sometimes the way he was treated in the press, but he didn't make such an issue out of it where like he started like, say like calling out individual reporters or, or, uh, you know, refusing to talk to reporters to the best of my knowledge, I will say, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, he still got into the hall of fame first ballot. And of course he hit over 500 home runs too, but 
um, and, and had over 3,000 hits and everything. So definitely, of course, you know, meets all the criteria for, for being in the Hall of Fame. But again, he's somebody who, you know, it wasn't always a, like, like an ass just because. And it's like the way you talk about, you know, the way Westbrook was behaving that, it's like, couldn't he have just given like the Belichick, we're on to Cleveland answers after every question or – yeah, you know, maybe done the the key and peel Marshawn Lynch and just said like you know, let's get some gravy, you know, and, or just you know, <laughs> and, and it just moved on, you know. It's like or the just more not think, up, or just not showing up and just eating the fine. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he should get, he should he should get fined anyway because if he shows up and he doesn't actually say anything, he didn't actually talk then. Oh no, I mean, he, he gave answers, questions. but he was oh. like he was like this like. I don't know how well you can hear me when I do this. Like he was ducking away from the microphone, checking his phone, kind of answering, but you couldn't really yeah, necessarily like, understand everything. Well, uh, so he was very much sending the message of "fuck you, I don't care." Yeah, I'm not really paying attention to you. I don't really care what your questions are. Yeah, fuck them. Which is fine, whatever, man. But it like that would be like me being here and be like, "Okay, we're doing a podcast." All right. Oh yeah. The <laughs> more. Uh, the, the more I know about him and hear about him and everything, it's just like the more it just makes me go. Oh yeah, and he had a from what I from what the 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 writer of the article that brought this to to light, evidently he had a terrible game too. He did. Like he played he's, terrible. He's having, he's having a pretty terrible season right yeah. now. So the Lakers don't really look smart for going out and getting him. So he's going to get criticized when he plays bad because LeBron's hurt right now. So Westbrook and Unibrow are the guys who are, and Unibrow's doing fine. He's healthy, but Westbrook's going to get a lot of criticism because he was one of their off-season acquisitions that was supposed to help this team get better, and he's not. They're not getting better. Like he's struggling mightily because he's a very selfish player. Mm-hmm. It's. Start, I just think it's starting to come to light that he's a selfish player. The minute Kevin Durant left Oklahoma City, I knew that he was leaving because Westbrook was selfish. It, it, he yes, he went to the Warriors because he wanted to win championships. Mm-hmm. But I also think underlying all of this is that Westbrook is <laughs> a selfish player, and Durant knew that he was a selfish player. He's like, I'm not going to win playing with this guy, which is yeah. true. So mm-hmm. I think it was. I just I didn't like, and I don't like the fact that Durant went to New Jersey or Brooklyn. I don't root for the Nets. I, I like Durant still, but I, I don't like James Harden and I don't like Kyrie Irving, so I I don't root for that team. But I don't think the only reason Durant left to go to the Warriors was so he could win championships. I think he all. I think the the West, Westbrook stuff figured into all this, and a lot of people are just like, "Oh, he just wants to go win championships, so he's leaving. He's going to the Warriors." I think the the Westbrook stuff was part of it, and I just think that not a lot of people bring that up. They they don't talk yeah, about Durant jumping ship. So. Yeah, Westbrook has a huge ego. Whether he'll ever admit it or not, you can tell just by the way he acts. Um, the way he talks, and he's got a huge ego. And and most players, let's be honest, most players in most sports have egos of some sort. Yes. And that is what it is. Now, some people have egos that they can t- calm down and be able to play with other people regardless of how good they think they are or whatever. Some people can't. I believe Westbrook has come. We're coming to find more and more that he is not one of those players that can play on a team that has other superstars because his ego gets in the way and it gets hurt when he's not the the star attraction in a team. And Steph, Steph's like the opposite of that. He took a back seat so Durant could come in and play, and Curry's yeah. numbers went down. And Curry's a team player. And as much as I don't like LeBron, I do think LeBron on some level also is not as much of a drama he, he's drama dramatic about some things but he, yeah, he's his not- is more on the yeah his is more on a political stage at drama than it is basketball drama anymore and he just he chases paychecks i feel like he chases paychecks and 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 that's just yeah. funny now because he's like he's starting to get hurt when he oh gets like hurt. all the time anymore he can't it's not just sit out a game or two now. It's like sit out five games or ten games when you get hurt. And he's he's been fortunate that he didn't have a major injury his whole career until two years ago when he pulled his groin and missed half the season. He's been fortunate, but it, his age is catching up with him. And these injuries that used to go away in a week are now taking two weeks or three weeks, and he's missing lots of games. I don't think the Lakers care. They just want to make the playoffs. 
I don't think the Lakers care whether they're the fifth seed or the seventh seed or the second seed. They're just going to get in the playoffs and try to be healthy at that yeah. point. So, well, you know, as, as long as we're having conversations about ego and everything, I, I would like to point out. Yeah, I can't I, stand your ego. Get over yourself. I'm, I'm I'm very happy that Joe is not on the podcast tonight because. <laughs> Well, what it's doing is that it's making it blatantly obvious that I am the one who carries this show 100%. You guys are my supporting. Get on family. with it. Yes, get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> you'll do what? what I say. You'll follow my lead. <laughs> You're my backing band, motherfuckers. <laughs> Thank you, Jeremy. As much as I hate Sorry. that, I wanted it there. <laughs> Sorry, I, f- I felt like that was the right time to, uh, you know. You can definitely talk a long time. That's for sure. <laughs> you know, I don't. I don't want to. I don't mean to get political here, but um, you know, one of the things if you follow politics, you always hear about is like you know the filibuster and all this shit. Back in the day, and they depicted this like on the West Wing. If you ever watched that show. To filibuster something meant that you actually had to get up there and you had to talk endlessly. Uh, you know, <laughs> your not, point? Not just, you, <laughs> not just that like you wouldn't do a filibuster. Gonna... You're supposed to be a filibuster. Is that the point of this? Yes, that was what I was going to say. I was like, I think that I could actually do that. The problem is they don't make you do that anymore in Washington. All you have to do is say, hey, I'm not going to vote for that. And then it's like they don't even bring it up for the thing. They don't make you go through that marathon talking session. And I got to admit, I want to see some of those marathon talking sessions come back. Like, because I like, like if Ted Cruz wants to oppose a bill, I'd love to hear Ted Cruz ramble on for hours because I'm pretty sure he would die halfway through it because he'd run out of things to say. That would just be entertaining to me. And then we could watch Biden fall asleep. And that would be awesome. Well, he wouldn't have to be, he, as the president, he doesn't have to be there for those sessions. Oh. And, 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 but but let's, be, let's, let's be honest. Anybody who actually stayed in the chamber to listen to Ted Cruz drone on for hours on end would fall asleep. I imagine so. Most of those politicians talk pretty boringly. Yeah, I mean, right. Pat, yes, Pat yes, fell asleep do. at WrestleMania, so I mean, <laughs> we could put Pat in that room. Give him ten well, seconds. I, I think we've discussed, <laughs> you know, I think we've discussed that WrestleMania plenty of times to say. I know just how boring it's, it was. It's, it's still, it's still. You're not that you're never living that one down. What you gonna do, brother? (laughs) Again, I don't care. The show was so fucking long. It was such a long day. It was cold. I was wearing a heavy coat at that point. I was like, well, nothing else is going on. Time to not off. And I think that's a good segue into our wrestling portion of the show. Oh yeah. (laughs) I saw Macho Man. I saw a really cool looking Macho Man Funko Pop today. Oh, I probably have it. This is the one where he's got like the glasses on. Yes. The, the hat. Yeah. Probably yes. Is. All right. So AJ, what the hell happened in wrestling this week? Because once again, I just did not have the time to watch any wrestling. I started to watch Raw, and I got to the Bianca Blair, Bianca Blair, Bianca Blair, and no, they had they had a five way match with women. Bianca was in a five way match to determine the number one contender for the women's belt. Yeah, I I got to see. I saw Becky come down and start talking, and I was like, "Oh my Becky god!" Becky was is... like outfit that was made out of like mirrors or whatever. Like Seth yeah. clearly dropped her this week. So I was like, "Oh my god, what the hell's going well, on here?" I, I gotta, you know, I gotta be honest. I gotta quote a Paul McCartney song here to you. You and you said you were starting to watch Raw. That was your first mistake. I didn't. <laughs> I actually had to close. I actually had to work till nine Monday. That's the first time I've had to close at, like at nine and since before the pandemic. So I only saw the last like hour of raw. I saw that women's match and I got to see Big E fought Kevin Owens and Kevin Owens turned heel at the end of the show, which made me happy. So, because now Owens is back doing what he does best. Mm-hmm. Raw was, raw was fine. NXT was eh. the, the pay-per-view last night for AEW was, was fantastic. Again, they just put two, a minus pay-per-views on back. Like I'm, I, they are smarter for having four pay-per-views a year instead of 12. So it, it, no doubt about it, that. You get better, you get better quality pay-per-views when you don't have as many. I think that that contributes to it. And they had a really, 
they had a really good pay per view last night. So I, like it, I, I still think they should maybe bump that up to six. But I mean, if they want to go to five or six, but they're going to start doing these Clash of the Champions things next year potentially. They already said the first one's going to be called Battle for the Belts. So I was a little surprised that I thought maybe Bray Wyatt was going to show up last night. Instead, Jay Lethal signed with Oh, eight sweet. Night. So, and he did the first Speaking thing. Of did, yeah. you no, know, the first thing he did is he's like, Shabani, like Ric Flair. And he's like, I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> well, yeah, him and Flair can have another woo off because they're both in the same. They're both there, yeah, right? They're not on television though, they have. We oh, he's not on television. <laughs> we haven't seen Flair since the uh, plane ride from hell, Dark Side of the yeah. Ring. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't, I don't remember Flair ever really doing that with Shivani. I mean, like you know, at least at least on Nitro, it was always, of course, me. Gee. It was still. <laughs> it was still funny to hear him do his Ric Flair voice. So, well, of I, course, I, I did see Flair tweeted about it too, which I thought was. Which I thought was cool. So. so they they like the first match last night was Darby Allen and MJF, and that, that was the best match of the night until they got to Kenny and Hangman at the end of the night. So when your first match is a five-star match, good luck to everybody else that follows you. When you your first match is like the best match of the night, like the first two matches last night were fantastic. And then it kind of you know tapered off a little bit, and then Kenny and Hangman put on a clinic at the end of the show and hangman won the belt. So all right. Did, uh, what's his name? Give it a, like a 17 star rating. Uh, he hasn't rated Meltzer hasn't rated. Anything. Meltzer hasn't rated. Anything yet. No, I don't think, I don't, I, I don't think he puts his ratings out that quickly unless he's, no, it's usually a, if, yeah. if he gives hangman and Kenny five or five and a quarter, that's fine. If he gives one of the like Darby and MJF five or like, they over they they overbooked a couple of endings of matches. They like you know did that overbooking where we're like this should be the finish, and then the match was five minutes longer. It, it know, seemed it, it seemed like this went on for a while too. Like it went on for like four hours. Well, th- their pay per views are usually four hours. Yeah, that's that's still too long. Well, I don't think it is. Well, I, if you're I, only doing four pay-per-views a, a year and you're giving them a four-hour show, I mean, look at what next week we're going to be sitting here from, what, 7 to 11? You know, that's five hours. No, it's and, 8. It's 8. It starts seven to 11. Oh, that, okay. So it's 8 to 11. 8 to 11, 30. Eight to, but, and I don't know how to count anyway. 7 to 11 is four hours, not five. The, what the hell am I doing? We pay $5 to have Peacock. You have to pay $50 for these AEW pay-per-views still. So, like, there's no... There's no network to stream it on. You have to pay $50. So if I get four hours of wrestling out of the $50 I spend, I'm okay with that. Yeah. As long if, as they're putting on good shows, right. four hours is fine. And the quality of the show was, you know, I, I think the Chris Jericho, the match with Jericho and the, the America's top team, that one was in eh. and Dan Lambert came out in like a velour blue track suit. <laughs> nice. And just ran around the ring. The whole time I did see an interview with Ethan page though. And somebody asked him if Dan Lambert was supposed to be like AEW making fun of Jim Cornette and Ethan page did not say no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That nice. it's necessarily, I, don't, I don't know that it's definitely necessarily making fun of Jim Cornette, but it's, it's, it's def it's definitely a knockoff or an illusion. To okay. People. That's, yeah. that's, that's, yeah, I, I mean that's absolutely, funny. Absolutely, I mean it's it's not like and it's not like it's uh, it's uh, hard to figure that out either if you if you listen to Cornette's podcast even once. So, but I, I did have a couple of quick questions about what I what I read because sometimes okay. when, sometimes when you read these people recapping the things, so, sometimes little details get lost in the. No, no, in the no it's fair. It's fair. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I'm not. I'll be honest with you. So I I thought it was a really good paper. So I'm going to tell you what was. If you ask me about something that I didn't like, I'm going to say yes. That part was a was an issue. Yeah. So uh, Jericho did an Eddie Guerrero tribute. Yes. Well, I, I do know yesterday was unfortunately the anniversary. Okay. The, the problem is that. that Jericho did an Eddie Guerrero tribute after somebody else had already done it earlier in the night. So I started having problems with everybody doing a tribute to Eddie Guerrero last night. So mm. well, yeah, that's I'll overdone. Be- I'll be well. I'll be blatantly honest about it. Then I don't 
who who else was it that did the Eddie Guerrero tribute? I think I want to say it was one of the Lucha Brothers, and they're Hispanic. So, like to me, that's that's where you're starting to like, like. And Jericho did a terrible. I don't. I think Jericho should be not be doing a frog splash, anyways. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Jericho's the guy who, if I wanted to see somebody do an Eddie Guerrero tribute. He's the guy who I would want to see do it just because he has history with, with Eddie. Right, but, his oh. time with Eddie Guerrero coming through yeah. the system. Yeah, exactly. Um, Baron Von Raschke, eh? Yes. <laughs> I did see the little the what? little anime book. Baron Von Raschke, he was a legendary. I know who he is. Oh, yeah. He was there he was at ringside. ringside. He was ringside, and he put the claw on Ethan Page last night. Yeah. <laughs> God. I just I I hey, I think that's kind of cool because Baron the, the Baron's I think like in his 80s now. So he's you know he's one of those and guys like, from that era who's still with all, them. He was selling it like he was all into it when they showed him ringside. He was like, you know, still playing the character kind of. So good for him. And his character was always kind of crazy. So that is all that people need to know. So I think CM um, Punk got legit busted open last night. I don't think he got I don't think he played it. I think he actually got busted open. Yeah, I was gonna say they the pictures I saw made it made it look hard way, you know. That match was it, that match was interesting because the crowd was actually split and they, they people were booing CM Punk last night. That's what I read. It said that they were there was a lot more more cheering for Kingston and booze for punk, which did surprise Kingston, me. A bit. Kingston's like a cult. He's like a cult guy in that right. He's he's not a good wrestler, guys. He's he's not. Mm. He he's a bare minimum. He does. He's a brawler. He doesn't know probably more than five or six wrestling moves. He's amazing on the mic. He but he's like a cult. He's like a cult guy in, in AEW. Like I I didn't like him at first because he always wears a tight shirt. You can see his gut, and I'm like, dude, just wear a fucking t-shirt. Why are you wearing a t-shirt? And this is Eddie Kingston, you said, right? Yes. Yes. So it... <sighs> Something makes me think I've seen him. Like I watched him on Dark for some reason in a match, and I remember watching him and going, "Why is this guy on their roster? Because he's not very good." So he's he's a cult he, guy. He's got a I huge think, fan base. He's more. He's. I think he's one of those guys he classifies more character than wrestler, if you will. Like, uh, I mean, sorry to bring Cornette into this again, but like one of his listeners sent in a question or. Or like brought up like an, an interview that Kingston gave where they were they were drawing some like parallels between like Kingston and, and, and Austin in a way as far as like 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 a, like like an organic kind of like you know groundswell support for him kind of like how like the fans just started cheering for Austin which ironically is uh, in that Nitro Raw rewatch that I've been doing following along with that guy is that channel. You know, we, we, we just passed WrestleMania 13 and everything. So, like, we're at that point now where it's like, you know, Austin just – he skipped the Raw after WrestleMania, but the next week he came out and he had, like, an in-ring interview with Vince, and he's like, you know, if I'm going to go with this guy and they want to cheer me, that's fine. If I'm going to go after that guy and they're going to boo me, that's fine. You know, he was he was playing more tweener-ish than full-fledged face, though, at that point, even though Brett had become – you know, full fledged heel. This was the episode where he like told Owen and Bulldog to stop fighting and everything. So, um, so they were kind of saying like they can see some of the similarities, though. Hmm. You know, of course they said Austin obviously was a was a the, better wrestler. You know, was like at least, at least before the neck injury. You know, Darby and Darby and Punk or Darby and MJF was like a split crowd too, which surprised me. I didn't realize that many. Whenever I go to events, everybody boos MJF. So he had a decent amount of people. <laughs> here last night and they were in minneapolis right yeah yeah not a place i would have expected mjf to get cheers they did a really they started the match with like probably a five or seven minute sequence where they were chain wrestling and it was fucking awesome i'm like oh my god if this is what's happening in this match already i'm like what the fuck else are we getting tonight like i was i was actually disappointed in the bat match with the young bucks and Adam Cole and jungle express. Like I was kind of disappointed in that match. Cause those matches where it's like falls count anywhere and people start doing crazy shit and the camera's only on one person and they had the slippery, they had the slippery like ramp way. Like they did when Kenny and Brian Danielson fought mm -hmm. like, you, because they were showing like, so people were slipping on that. They did some, 
cool stuff and like like uh, luchasaurus did like a shooting star from like the the like walkway i knew a bunch of people on the floor but he like ran up and just did a shooting star so like that was kind of cool i don't like luchasaurus but he actually yeah, I'm try to see if i can find that clip like he might have been I just, I was upset because Adam Cole, like, I'm like, this is his first match on pay-per-view and he loses. <laughs> so well, yeah. I, I will, I will say when I was reading through the results, the two, and again, cause you know, when you're just like reading through results, you know, you, you really can't picture in your mind. So like, really, you're just looking to see like what the climax of the match was and everything. There was two things about that match that stood out to me. One that surprised me and one that I definitely did not like the thing that surprised me was that Christian and, you know, Jungle Express won. won. That surprised me. The thing that I definitely didn't like is that they won with the concerto. And Jungle Boy did it. Uh, yeah, come on. That's, that's a move they don't need to be doing. No, so. I think that, it, it, for me, it's the nostalgia part of it. I mean, granted, it can be kind of dangerous too, but for me, it's more of a nostalgia thing. Like that, like... Leave that to do like that's an edge and Christian thing. Like yeah, that's it's an edge and Christian thing. Yeah, yeah. So, so like that. So, but also, so like, it, it also cheapens the win for those guys too. It's like you know, I understand what Charles count anywhere and everything, but you're winning by you know doing the simulated. We're crushing the guy's head in between two metal folding chairs. Bullshit. So, so like in the so in the FTR in the FTR Lucha Brothers match, the match was really good too that was the second match and that match was fantastic it was the lucha brothers doing all the crazy stuff they do and it was ftr playing the smarmy heels and cheating and getting away with stuff like you know, ftr is really good at like they're like an 80s 90s like tag team they wrestle more like a tag team so yeah, what, should have been, what should have been the finish of the match was the lucha brothers finisher is uh, Penta puts the guy in like a package pile driver and Phoenix jumps off the rope and kind of spikes him. So, but what they did last night is when Phoenix spiked him, he jumped off of him onto the other guy and did a splash. I'm like, how is that not the finish? Like, I've never seen anybody do that before. It was like one of those things where I'm like, holy fucking shit. And then that's not the finish. And then they do some finish where the guys where FTR puts masks on and the wrong guy gets pinned so we can continue the feud or whatever. Like that it was a shit finish to continue the feud. But I'm like, what are we doing? Like, how is that not the finish? How is the best spot I've seen? I'm gonna see the whole night, not the finish of this match. So so they did like the reverse killer bees? Kind of, yeah. They 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 because when FTR won the AAA tag belt from them. They were these Mexican frog guys or whatever. So they both went under the ring and put masks on. And they right. rolled the, the wrong, the guy that wasn't the guy that should be tagged. They rolled him in and he got pinned. So now we're going to get another match between these guys because they're going to say. And was this at full gear? Yeah. Okay, let me see. I'm going to bring up that match real quick. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, like, the Killer Bees used to do that back in the day. Right. And I remember, they, I remember, so this was... They they did that at the original Survivor Series, just as an example, since we're at no, Survivor I... Series. But, they, but, you know, of course, they won the match when they did that. So, like, so I, I actually thought Miro and Dan O'Brien was not very good. I've seen a lot of people say that that match was good. I thought it was average. I thought it was a tip, like, it was like I was watching a WWE match. Miro wrestles, like, very slow. And like I don't I don't like him because his 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 pacing Dan O'Brien's not really that kind of pacing guy, so yeah, Mimiro's always been a more methodical type. And wrestler. They, whatever the finish was, they were doing something off the ropes, and it bot something got botched, and it didn't look very good. It looked it was kind of a shit finish, like it, it, something didn't go right. It wasn't a complete botch, but somebody missed something somewhere when they were jumping off the ropes or whatever. And it was kind of a shit finish. So that match to me was probably the worst match of the night that other oh. than the Jericho train wreck. So, but like Britt Baker and Tay Conti, that match was decent. They, they Britt still looks like she doesn't know what's going on to me sometimes as much as I like her, but she, I, I, 
I see. I, I see. I, I know what you mean just from looking at still shots of her sometimes. She, she has she has this look on her face which does kind of say she's she's confused. But she does stuff. She does like spots and and like stuff that we don't like. Most women don't do. She like it's almost like she wants to wrestle with the guys because they did a pile driver last night. They were doing like crazy shit like moves on the apron. So th- there was a couple of really cool spots in the match, and it's Brit wanting to be creative and do do stuff that like i usually don't see women do i guess i'm not trying to be sexist but it's like stuff where she like wants to push the envelope a little bit did we find it yeah so i found this clip this is pretty fucking nuts um so this somebody put highlights of that matchup which is only 40 seconds which is crazy because i would think there'd be more highlights but you'll see this it's how much you're gonna get away with being able to put on yeah yeah before yeah so here boom (laughs) two Like that that's fucking that's fucking crazy that he was able to pull that off. Like that move. If you can go back and try to show it again, Jeremy. Yeah. That's crazy. There's Tully. Let, there's what Pat? Yeah, this is it. I was saying there's Tully. <laughs> Looking at Tully's bald yeah. head. How cool wow. is that that's... that he jumped off the guy's ass? <laughs> that's that requires so much perfection and timing. That's how that's is that not that my the point, only thing not, that not the finish guys <laughs> right the only thing that would have made that better is if he would have went down like right a split second like just a yeah. hair sooner you're right like that would have made it a little bit better it's like he slow wasn't motion, ready in, in slow motion it's it, you can see that i couldn't see that last night because it was in normal speed but to me that should have been the finish like how is that not the finish to this match <laughs> Yeah, that would have been a proper place to do the finish. But yeah, you know, that, that was not what it was going to be last night. It was night. really it was really good though. Like I Bleacher Report, I I looked today and I gave it an A and like 95% of the people gave this pay-per-view an A. Somebody gave it an F. And they were like, "What noob gave this pay-per-view an F?" <laughs> <laughs> I, I I have my issues with AEW. I don't like everybody who's in AEW. Look, just from meeting the results, I know it was not an F pay-per-view. You're doing that just because you're being a fucking troll. And all I can say to that is, throw the fuck up. Yeah. Get a get a, get a, get a, get a get a fucking life. That was, that was that was the best part of this week was was that like that pay-per-view last night was better than anything that happened the rest of the week there wasn't a lot of memorable things that smackdown every week not that i'm complaining because i love watching the bloodline beat the shit out of the new day but that's what happened again this week roman stole xavier's crown and i don't know if he's king roman now or what but like i just that's what smackdown is right now watching the bloodline beat the crap out of the new day that's it's right they don't have anything else to to give well, us evidently Big E's fighting Roman next weekend. So like oh, okay. how so the the thing that I'm the most intrigued at at Survivor series is Charlotte versus Becky because Becky did an interview and said she doesn't talk to Charlotte and they're not friends anymore. So I'm really yeah. curious to see how that's going to play out now. <laughs> the, the, the very interesting thing about that Becky interview was how much of it was work and how much of it was shoot. And the reason I say that and. Well, who did the interview first off? I believe it was with Sports Illustrated. Yeah. Okay. She was giving kind of longer answers to some questions and shorter answers to others. And, like she went on, she went on, she went on this kind of like longer rambling answer about like somebody, sometimes somebody's got to step up in the locker room and be the hero. <laughs> be the hero and blah 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 that felt like a work but then when they ask her do you trust charlotte and her answer is simply no that feels like shoot you know that feels like that feels Mm -hmm. like reality and everything so you know again i i'm still gonna get up on my soapbox and bitch that survivor series is fairly meaningless because it is there's no stakes and when they do these champion versus champion matches it's like so the fuck what it's like you know you're basically suspending storylines just for the sake of doing interpromotional matches which it's not like we haven't seen biggie wrestle roman before right i mean you know 
Um, I, I actually kind of, I doing your best D'Lo Brown impression there. <laughs> well, I am actually kind of interested to see Damian Priest versus Shinsuke. I think they could put on a decent match with each other, and I don't know that they've ever wrestled before. But um, yeah, to see what goes on in this Becky versus Charlotte match will be interesting because I made the illusion a few weeks ago. It almost starts. It's almost starting to feel like this is like they used to be really good friends and everything. It's like now they don't trust each other. Brett, Sean, here we go again. You know who's going to be the one that's going to snap first? So and um, yeah. Charlotte, Charlotte, when on SmackDown, she like she kept saying stuff to Becky, and she was like, "Uh oh," and like it was hilarious. I don't remember. She said three or four things to Becky, and she's like, "You're actually going to have to come out and fight me in a match." Uh oh. So like Charlotte was really good on the mic again. <laughs> Yeah. And, and, and see, the thing of it is here is that I, I truly do believe that Charlotte feels like she is head and shoulders above everybody else. And I feel like there's probably a lot of natural resentment from other people regarding that because you can't always carry yourself around like your character without getting heat in, in, in real life, you know, in, in the locker room, I think. Just ask MJF. Yeah. Um, but I also think that charlotte she shows a lot of the same traits that her that her father did and that you know being insecure being afraid of losing the top spot uh and resenting when somebody gets over on their own because i still don't think becky was supposed to have gotten over to the extent that she did when she turned on Charlotte at that SummerSlam match a couple of years ago, and then that led into the yeah, whole maybe. man thing and everything. But there's been documented instance, instances from Ric Flair's career where he supposedly interfered with guys' pushes and, and stuff like that. Like, uh, as an example, like uh, on the Brian Pillman DVD that they put out years ago when they were talking about the Hollywood Blondes, first they were talking about how they just – stuck Pillman and Austin together because they didn't know what to do with with either guy and like Austin didn't like it at first because he had been promised a U.S. title run which of course didn't happen but then they got themselves over by embracing like the ridiculousness part and like putting like like the lights in their boots and and just everything that they did and then all of a sudden they got broken up yeah and they kept talking on the DVD about well, I don't know why they broke us up. Or it was like, you know, yeah, somebody, I think it was Dusty Rhodes at all people saying, uh, like, you know, yeah, somebody in the back, baby, just was getting a little insecure about their thought. And it's like, well, that had to be fucking Ric Flair at that point in WCW. Because <laughs> I don't think it would have been Sting or Vader or anything like that. And because the Blondes <laughs> had just worked with the Horsemen, like with Flair and Anderson, you know, and everything. So it's like, I think Flair got them broken up before they reached like an apex or like surpassed Rick and Arn on the card. So yeah. Um, and back then it would make more sense because the, the more over you were, the better bookings you got and the more money you made on a nightly basis. Nowadays. Yeah. You still want to be on the top spot because you want to be on TV all day, you know, every day, but you're getting paid the same amount no matter what. It's not like there's any – there might well, – I mean, there get, could be bonuses and stuff like that. But for, like, merchandise and stuff, though. Right. So, but yeah, and, who knows, and who knows what their downside guarantees are. If I had to wager a guess, Charlotte has a bigger downside guarantee than Becky does. Even, right. even, even, even the way that Becky's been pretty huge now for the last, you know, two years or so. Like, I just – so – they do have an issue, which again, it'll be interesting to monitor in, in the in the backstage stuff. It's just as far as is Charlotte happy? Is Charlotte gonna threaten to walk? You know, I don't think Charlotte going to AEW would be good for her, though. It would be good for AEW, but I actually think it would hurt her. Um, because for one thing, she kind of call herself Charlotte. Not that that necessarily matters. I'm sure she would just use her real first name. But um, I mean, there's, I, 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 there's I don't less, know. I, I, I still I still less, just think there's less talent there. There's yeah. less like top tier yeah. talent. So she would like be if she wants to be queen shit on Turd Mountain, she would be fine there because she's substantially better than Britt Baker, who's probably or Thunder Rosa, who's probably the next two best people. And there's a gap. So yeah. if she wants to go be in a situation like that, 
then that's where she, that would work for her. But if she wants to be where Sasha and Bailey and, and the better people are, like the better, the women's division in AEW is still not great, even though Britt Baker is, is a star and they have Thunder Rosa and they have one or two other Ruby Soho. They have a couple other people floating around who are stars. They don't have a whole division of stars. <laughs> right, which is why I don't understand why they're introducing a second title unless they think that having a secondary woman's title will help elevate some of the other people. It's like, well, that's a big if, I think, was what I've seen from some of their non non Brit Ruby Thunder Rosa. I just you know, mm-hmm. I just watched Jade Cargill and they did the smart there. They don't trust that girl for shit because she had another squash match. They don't want her in the ring for more than two minutes at a time right now. I mean <laughs> I, I still think that's smart booking, but at some point, yeah, she's got to be able to go beyond that. Well yeah she's she's she in this be, she can't she can't be fucking Goldberg. She's in this tournament so she's got to fight uh, Red Velvet next, which Red Velvet was in that match with Cody and Shaq, where the women were the best part of that match. So mm-hmm. I think they put her in this match with Red Velvet again because she's mm-hmm. the one that made Dave look good the first time they were in a major match. So they're putting Red Velvet with her again because I, I think Jade's going to win, but I think Red Velvet's going to be the, the person that's the star of the match. <laughs> yeah. Some, something else I just noticed about Survivor Series, I'm on the, uh, the Wikipedia page for Survivor Series, so I want to take this as official or anything, but I see they've got one spot on both Team Smackdowns listed as TBA now. Sami Zayn lost his spot. Yeah, Sami Zayn, and they took, they took Aaliyah out on the SmackDown women's team as well. If what I saw, I think I'm very briefly at the front. I'm expecting Sonya to Deville to insert herself in that spot. Oh, I thought they might put Naomi in based upon what I thought I saw in SmackDown on Friday night, but well, Na- but Sonya's Sonya's been like not doing stuff with Naomi, so she's been like okay. like intentionally. So I felt like when they took Aaliyah out, I felt like ultimately, unless they're going to have Naomi and Sonya fight on SmackDown this week, and then the winner gets that spot, maybe Naomi does end up in that spot. But I see, I, I'm very upset that Sammy lost his spot. I was disappointed at that. So why why announce these teams if you're going to take spots away from people? Well, not my spot. <laughs> not my dog spot. Not my liver may, spot. <laughs> may, 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 maybe just to try to add some intrigue to it as we build towards the paper. Because they took Dominic to the off. They took Dominic off and put Bobby Lashley on. To me, that's like replacing shit with shit. So whoop de fucking yeah. do. Um, you know, maybe they all righty then. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe they also felt they had to take Sammy out because they more or less just turned Owen heel. Uh, you know, I, I guess you would call that was an you say that was an Owen's heel turn there at the end of Raw, yes. Uh, so maybe they felt like they don't need to have heel Owens and heel Sammy on opposite sides. I, uh, I don't know who's gonna replace him. That one, I don't know. Like, I just, I just. What team is what? What brand is Sheamus on right now? He could be the other person on SmackDown. Was he on SmackDown now? I'm just yeah. Just... He he's he's been off TV. He's supposed to show up again next week, but they they put this thing that Ridge Holland guy from NXT who's terrible. They moved him up to the main roster, and they're going to put him in a program with Sheamus probably. And it's just not. It's not going to be Ridge Holland is an idiot. If, if, of all the people from NXT, they could have called up. It's like they said who's the worst five guys here let's pick one of the guys from that barrel well well well, i've made i've talked about stories about how they've done that before so especially when johnny ace is in charge uh whatever the hell i mean again because i know i'm not watching these shows on a weekly basis but whatever the fuck happened to cesaro he he, get do we have to put his face on do we have to put his face on milk cartons again or he (laughs) he actually came out and like jabbered with with that ridge holland because ridge holland like me and me and sheamus are going to be better than the bar so they're like so cesaro's probably going to fight ridge holland and put him over next week on the show which is like no terrible, terrible. hey and talk, talk so, about a guy i would like to see go to aew cesaro's probably number one on that list yeah i mean cesaro's number two on that list because kevin owens is number one on that list for me so <laughs> yeah i'd put cesaro ahead of Owens, but that's my preference all right. So, can I, can I just ask one other quick question about Full Gear? Yes. Make it quick. 
the bu- so the Bucks came out, but they didn't really interfere. In so the yeah, match. so that that's the that that I I like I'm intrigued by that. Like they yeah. on, on Rampage the other night, he he it was Cole in the box, and Hangman's like, let me talk, let me just talk to the box, and they're like, whatever you Cole's our buddy, whatever you need to say, you can say in front of him, and then Cole like walked off, and then he's like, I screwed you. You screwed me. We're even. So, because like one, like Hangman screwed them out of the tag belts, and then they screwed him out of the one world title shot. So he's like, "We're even. Don't you guys touch me on Saturday, or I'm gonna fuck you up, basically." So they came limping out last night with their fucking like ice bags all over themselves, selling everything. And he was on. They were both on opposite sides of the ring, and. He was he did a buckshot lariat from one side and and he looked at Nick and Nick just nodded his head and then he went over to the other side and did a buckshot lariat from there and both of them just nodded at him. So now I'm like, all right, is, is Kenny gonna are they gonna is Kenny gonna have friction with them now? Or are they gonna say bye bye, Kenny? We don't need you anymore. Like that's like I maybe that's where this is going. Well, well, they, they, I, yeah. So that's the thing. I mean, that sounds interesting, and they could definitely do that. But now, of course, kind of an ancillary to that, there's rumors about Kyle O'Reilly's contract is supposedly coming up soon. What happens if he filters his way to AEW? Don't you have to put Cole with Fish and O'Reilly? Oh well, yeah, I, I saw a meme. I saw a meme this week, and it was like a kid outside a window looking into a room with a bunch of kids partying, and it said, "This is Kyle O'Reilly right now." <laughs> nice. I mean, just considering his history with with Cole and Fish and everything, I mean, yeah, that that's that makes well, perfect. They, they had and Cole, because and because who knows what the hell he's doing with NXT right now? The way they've done him over at they, they had Cole hire like Bobby Fish to go fight Jungle Boy on Rampage, so they acknowledged that Bobby Fish that and Cole be. friends on television now. I didn't, so, I didn't, yeah, I, I missed that. So, so we went there. I did. I did read my, I'm completely done with Moxley's book. So I read his whole book. He's, he's very snarky. He's a very snarky, like sarcastic mm-hmm. person. Just like, not, just- not, not surprised at all from what, from how he conducts himself. And, and also frankly, from how his, how his wife comes across a lot too. So he, uh, every chap, like, like there were sporadic chapters throughout the book where he would end each chapter with a joke from cesaro and they are all terrible corny like dad jokes like every fucking one of them was like corny shit that i'm just like this is stupid but they would always be like here's a claudio joke so i know that that has to be cesaro because i don't know anybody else named claudio (laughs) in real life other than him so i'm assuming that they were from cesaro he did say that he i was disappointed because i was hoping he was going to actually talk about when they made him go out and make fun of Roman for having leukemia, he did not touch talk about that. I was kind of disappointed. I kind of wanted to hear how uncomfortable that was going to be. He did say the last four months he was in WWE, he could not wait to be done. Like he wanted. Yeah, I, I definitely would have wanted to hear his take on that. He he talked about like when he was in CZW with like Nick Gage and doing all those fucking death matches and shit. And he said that these. They had this like deathmatch tournament, guys, and it took place in the middle of fucking nowhere, just in a fucking field surrounded by trees with a fucking ring in the middle because they were doing stuff that's that's not legal in these fucking matches. They were fighting with all these fucking weapons, doing all this crazy shit, and they had to do it in the middle of nowhere where there was no nobody could find it. So like Nick Cage almost died in that match. Yes, he did. He like Moxley actually had to go finish the match because Gage like landed on like a fucking like, they said like a, a one of those glass light bulb tubes. Yeah, fluorescent like, tubes went in his, went in his armpit, <laughs> mm-hmm. and he had to be like helicoptered because there was nobody knew where it was. So they, Moxley's like, it's not like we can give somebody the the ambulance the address and say we're in this field in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, that was on the. Uh, um... Dark, dark side, side of the ring, of the ring. For, it was fucking dude's nuts but anyways um we are going to call it a night um because we are at the mid well we're actually after midnight yeah, now <laughs> after midnight when so we're morning. actually on to monday we are in monday time um but we just i just 
want to quick remind everybody please please tune in on sunday next week because we will be live we will be doing our watch party for the survivor series we were giving away two free t-shirts all you got to do is answer darth pat's question if you get the question right you win a shirt but then you can't answer the other question and get another shirt because it's one shirt per person giving away two shirts we want to make sure two different people get those shirts so please tune in we will be live <laughs> on facebook like always and we always, as always, want to thank everybody for watching, whether you caught it live on Facebook now, you're watching a replay on Facebook, you're catching it on YouTube, or you're catching the audio version, uh, which will be posted later on this week, either on Pandora, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or wherever you catch your podcasts. Um, you know, we just, we do this, we're, it's a lot of fun for us to just sit here and bullshit and, and make fun of people and make fun of ourselves and make fun of Pat more. Um <laughs> <laughs> exactly pat thank you um but we we really do we do this for you guys we do it for ourselves uh and we hope you guys enjoy every episode that you get to listen to and 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 or watch uh with that we are going to say have a good evening a good morning and a good afternoon and we'll catch you on the next episode